Good evening, West Orange. Welcome to our eighth council meeting of the, of the year. This is April 25th, 2017. We have a busy calendar, so we'll get right to it. Madam Clerk Pro Tem. This is to inform the general public that this meeting is being held in compliance with Section 5 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. The annual notice was emailed to the Star Ledger and filed in the Township's Clerk's Office on November 28, 2016, and published in the West Orange Chronicle on December 8, 2016. Councilwoman Casalino? Present. Councilman Cirillo? Present. Councilman Garino? Present. Councilwoman McCartney? Present. Council President Krakowiak? Present. Uh, first item on our conference agenda tonight is a recognition of World Autism Awareness Month. I suspect that a lot of people in West Orange know a person or a family with autism. And uh, I, certainly my older son is autistic, so I'm very familiar with the situation. Uh, we just invited some of the um, groups here in town that help provide services to uh, uh, autism, autistic individuals. And so we wanted to just recognize them with a, uh, uh, with a proclamation from the mayor. I just want to invite uh, everyone up uh, uh, to uh, meet at the lectern and I'll read the citation and then I'll let you guys speak a little bit about why people should care about uh, Autism Awareness Month. I want to just uh, invite up, uh, there's two people from Garden Academy, which is a uh, private school here in West Orange. Uh, Devin Maloney, who is Director of Development, and Laurie, Laura, excuse me, Bilski, who's the Development Coordinator. We also have a bunch of people from the public schools. Uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Irv Schwartzbaum, who's the board vice president. We have uh, Mr. Jeff Rutsky, who's superintendent. Uh, Connie Salambino, who's director of special services for the school district. And then also uh, Kristen Gogarty, who is uh, supervisor of special education for pre-K through grade five. And also Don Ribeiro, who is a supervisor of special education for grades uh, six through 12 in the school district. If you could just meet everybody over here at the, at the uh, lectern, we'll get going. Thank you, everybody. Uh, this is a proclamation from Mayor Parisi. Uh, whereas autism is a pervasive development, developmental disorder affecting the social, learning, communication, emotional, and behavioral skills of those affected by it across a wide spectrum of conditions, often characterized by above average intelligence and memory, as well as mastery of complex subjects and skills, and Whereas, as more health professionals become proficient in diagnosing autism, more children are being diagnosed on the autism spectrum, resulting in rates as high as 1 in 68 children nationally and 1 in 45 in New Jersey. And, whereas it is well documented that if individuals with autism receive early and ongoing specialized attention, treatments, therapies, and accommodations as needed, they lead significantly improved, productive, and mainstreamed lives, and whereas individuals with autism often require a lifetime of specialized educational, vocational, family, and community support services, and whereas West Orange is well known for its autism services and community support through entities that include the Township of West Orange, the West Orange Public Schools, Garden Academy, Mount Carmel Guild, and others, and whereas increased awareness and knowledge about autism and interaction with those individuals with the condition and their families and friends often leads to richer and more fulfilled lives for all involved. And now therefore be it resolved that I, Mayor Robert D. Parisi, do hereby proclaim April 2017 as National Autism Awareness Month in the Township of West Orange and urge all employees and residents to participate in National Autism Awareness Month activities as well as in the, few, in the months to follow to become better educated about autism and create a better community for individuals with autism. Signed, Mayor Parisi. So as part of raising uh, the awareness of autism, I just uh, have asked uh, folks to come up here and just speak briefly uh, about why people should care. So if I could get everybody to, to sit down and we'll get the Guarding Academy up here first and then whoever else wants to come up uh, can certainly uh, do so. Oh, I'm sorry, we need to get a, get a picture. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not good at my job. <laughs> so please, everybody come on over here. Can you stretch over here. Sure. Come on. Oh. Hello. Yes. Hello. 
You guys want to come see? Sure, why not? Yes, okay. <laughs> Great. Oh, talk to the camera. Okay. <laughs> I'm loud, so I don't know if I need these, but. Well, hello, hello. <laughs> everyone. Welcome. Thank you for having us. We're really honored and thrilled that we were um, reached out to and able to be a part of this evening. We're very, very excited. I'm Devin Maloney. I'm the Director of Development at Garden Academy. Garden Academy is fairly new to West Orange. We've actually only lived in West Orange, if you will, for um, two and a half years, so we're very new. Um, however, Garden Academy has been serving individuals with autism for 10 years. We are a private nonprofit for individuals with autism. We service students 3 to 21. Um, and we are unique in the sense that we are a one-to-one -one applied behavior analysis school for individuals with autism, meaning that we have 29 students in our school and we have 29 instructors in our school. Uh, the uniqueness of this serves the students, obviously, in, in really great ways. We're able to um, really have individualized programming that we wouldn't otherwise be able to have. And uh, we have a few unique parts of our program that I think are worth touching on tonight. Um, we do serve students from all over the state. However, we have several students from the West Orange, South Orange, Maplewood area. Um, and we, uh, then again, we have students from Tom's River and, and, and everywhere. So um, one of the most unique parts of our program, again, is the, that we are driven by applied behavior analysis. Applied behavior analysis, in a nutshell, if you will, is a science-based therapy. We use reinforcement to help shape behaviors so everything that you and I do anybody does individuals with autism is driven by the reinforcement that is paired with it you turn a doorknob to go through a door you go to work so that you receive a paycheck you have interactions with people because it feels good so every single behavior that we have every single day is paired with the reinforcement what we do with individuals with autism is that we micromanage that reinforcement so we may break it down to a Dorito or access to a movie or jumping on the trampoline. We really find out what these kids like and we use that to help us shape their behavior to where we need it to go. Um, because of the nature of our school, we are dealing with some topographies that are a little bit more challenging. We may have students who come to us that are nonverbal, uh, completely nonverbal. We may have students who come to us with some um, difficult behaviors, whether that be aggression or self-injurious behavior. We are um, accepting students that the districts have otherwise decided they cannot serve. So that's how students get into our placement. Um, we're located, I probably should have said this first, <laughs> we're located on Mount Pleasant Avenue. Um, and um, one of the other really unique parts of our program is our parent training. So because we have this one-to-one, -one, we're able to go into the home. This is a very unique part of what we can do as a private school. Um, we're able to go into the home. So once a week, our primary teachers go actually to the school, um, the families' homes, and we're there to really improve quality of life. So it may be that uh, we want to target the child getting out of bed in the morning appropriately, or it may be sitting at the dining room table with their family, or going to the grocery store um, and avoiding uh, eloping behavior or bolting behavior into the parking lot or whatever it may be. We're able to access those opportunities based on our one-to-one -one programming and actually get our professionals into the home. So there's a lot of little unique parts of our program. I find it to be very special. I've been at Garden for 10 years. Um, I'm obviously very passionate about it. And our building that we, um, when we came into the West Orange community, uh, we have been blown away by the support of West Orange. We think it's a fantastic community be, to be a part of. The building is perfection for us. It's really nice. We were able to build a laundry center, a hotel room and bedroom, a doctor's and dentist's office, um, a lot of spaces where we can go beyond the classroom, access the child's life, and really have a profound impact on the family. Um, so I think the last thing, if I can have 30 more seconds, is I like to invite every person into this room to Garden Academy. I can talk and talk about it all day, and I, I truly could. You'd be shocked. <laughs> um, but 
you know, it's really something to see it. So I would love to invite everybody here out to see what we do, see the building, um, and um, learn a little bit more about these incredible, incredible kids. They've changed my life, and um, I'm just grateful to be a part of this community. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rutsky, Mr. Schwartzbaum, would either of you care to make remarks? We're going to defer oh, we're... to the director. Sounds good. Ms. Salambino, please. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. On behalf of Dawn, Kristen, and I, I would like to thank members of the town council, Mayor Parisi, and Council President Krakowiak for inviting us here this evening. We are also joined by, as you know, Superintendent Jeff Rutsky and Board Vice President Irv Schwartzbaum. And we'd also like to thank them for their continuing support of our department students and families. Without their support, we would not be able to provide any of the services which we continually try to do to support our students and families. Um, as you are aware, West Orange is known across the state and in the region for its commitment to excellence in the education of every child. And that includes our extraordinary services in education for students with autism. Um, we have a wide and vast array of special education services. And as you may or may not be aware, our district has programs for students with special needs from age three through 21. We are a comprehensive district and we take our responsibilities seriously. Our district and department is also known for getting involved in issues that affect our community and our world. Recognizing Autism Awareness Month across the district with education, activities, and fundraising for research and our own programs is only one example of that commitment. That being said, it's a team effort. We work with an amazing group of teachers, child study team members, paraprofessionals, administrators, and support professionals, and that is across the district and across the board, and we couldn't do it at all without the support of our community members and parents. So it is truly a great team effort, and it's an honor and privilege for all of us to work with them every day. Thank you for your acknowledgement of Autism Awareness Month and our department. Thank you. Very nice. And thank you to everyone who came out for uh, uh, the recognition in such dreary weather. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is something called Solar Challenge. I'm going to punt this to Councilwoman McCartney. Okay, and, thank you. Uh, take it away, please. Thank you. But just before they leave, I just wanted to say, I see that they're getting ready to go, that on Sunday I was invited to a fundraiser because, as Connie said, uh, the program we have here, not at, uh, at Garden Academy, but also here in town at our school, our public school system, um, is comprehensive. But there's also that outreach for parents, too. So we have a parent advocacy group, parents advocating for children's special pass parents advocating special services and education. They had a fundraiser on Sunday at the Artful Bean, uh, which was a, a assemblywoman, Angela McKnight, out of Jersey City was there attending. And it was to raise funds so that we can continue the scholarship fund for the, the students that are in special services. So it was a, a lovely day. And because we do have so many new families in town, it almost seems like we do have to do an education outreach to let parents know how many resources are available, not just for their parents, for their students, uh, for their children. Um, even through our recreation department, we have a footsteps program, a mentoring system, so there's quite a bit. Out there, mayor's program for individuals with special needs. Um, there's a lot out there that uh, we just need to continue to uh, advocate. So it's great. Uh, Thanks for being here. Okay. And now for what? Okay, and now for, for sorry, all right, thanks. I have Without to, I further ado. <laughs> um, so I am the coordinator for Sustainable Jersey, and we uh, are just about to accept the solar challenge through Sustainable Jersey. Um, I have invited, uh, Mike Brick is the chair of the Environmental Commission, he is here, and Stephen Neal, from the Township of Verona, uh, Department of Community Affairs. State, Verona has already implemented the Solar Challenge. There were many options that Sustainable Jersey offered to municipalities, um, and we wanted to find out which would be the best fit for our township. So I've, I have invited Stephen here to explain how Verona um, implemented a plan and how it worked for them. 
uh, because we do have so many uh, residents here that are using solar panels. We have been looking at it with the Board of Ed and the Township uh, for a number of years. Um, and, uh, and Stephen Neal is here, so. The reason Verona is here is because Verona has been hosting the Essex chapters of the sustainable meetings for the county. So West Orange, we've had a nice showing from West Orange, right Stephen? West Orange has a very good showing. Um, West Orange, Glen Ridge, Montclair, Verona, yeah. Bloomfield. As Mike Brick, chairman of the West Orange Environmental Commission, hello to all the council members and administrative staff. And the reason I'm here is to introduce Steve and give a little bit of an overview as Susan did. So um, Susan McCartney, Joe McCartney, and myself went to a hub meeting over at the Boathouse in Verona about six, eight weeks ago. And it was a discussion about solar. And in that discussion, uh, Steve gave a presentation and the township of Verona has uh, adopted this program and they've been doing it for 10 months. Um, Steve is head of community services. He's a full-time employee, been with Verona 10 years. So he's not an amateur in this situation. He knows what he's doing and he picked this program. And at this point in time, they have 105 registered households on it. Private homes? Yeah. yeah not a little private. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when we listen to the outline of the program, it's a, a program that the town can get behind and not be embarrassed by it. Um, this is a professional company. It costs us nothing as a township. Um, they do the checking with the contractors who would supply the solar panels. They uh, do the advertising. Um, they do the solicitation for it. As as um, an agent of the township, but not a bonded agent of the township. It, the town has no responsibility to it other than recommending them. Um, they will get for the uh, resident three professional quotes that the resident then can go out and make a choice what, and who, what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. So let me introduce Steve, and he'll explain the program a lot better than I can. Thank you. Thanks. Hello, and uh, thank you for inviting me out on such a lovely night. Um, of, all, of all nights to talk about solar. <laughs> it's still, it's solar, still it's raining. It still works in the rain. <laughs> um, this is just a handout for you to kind of look through. We're not going to go through in a whole lot of detail. God bless. Um, but like Mike said, my name is Steve Neal, Township of Verona. Uh, I've been with the town for 10 years. I've been overseeing our sustainability initiatives and our green team for about three, three to four years now. Um, and I've also been the chair of the Essex County Hub for about two years now. And just a little bit more background on the actual challenge. So Sustainable Jersey came up with um, something new this year, a new initiative called the Solar Challenge. And townships were allowed to apply to the program to be a part of the challenge. Um, with that, we got support from Sustainable Jersey, but we had to follow a certain set of guidelines to get things up and running. Um, one of those was being a mass mailing, along with uh, mostly other publicity-related issues. We had to hit certain deadlines. Um, but through that program, we've really come to like the Energy Sage platform, which is really what I'm here to talk about. Energy Sage is just an online solar marketplace. So instead of you know, going out to bid and finding a solar installer to run a solarized program, which I believe you've done in the past. Um, you can actually just push your residents towards Energy Sage. Everything's done online. There's no harassing phone calls or visits from installers in the area. Uh, a resident would go on, simply enter your email address, some utility bill information, and then you're good to go. You'll start receiving quotes. And I do want to make note that you actually, you're not limited to three quotes. You could receive an unlimited number of quotes. Some are going to be good, some aren't, and that's the best thing about it is you could just reject them, send them back, and that's it. You're not committed to anything. You don't have to talk to anybody until you get to that point in the conversation where you're actually going to sign a contract. 
Uh, Verona decided to get involved with this because we didn't want to do a solarized program. We don't like the whole liability aspect of it, you know, supporting one installer. There's a lot of issues that could come along with that. So we really like this. Uh, it's an easy way. It's free for the town to get started. Energy Sage handles all the marketing materials. You can see on this handout, they customize a link for us. We have a customized URL, veronasolar.org, that we actually are going to keep after the challenge ends. Um, the Verona Solar Challenge technically ends at the end of May, but we're actually just going to keep it going and keep it available to our residents. So far, um, we really haven't had a whole lot of pushback from our residents because it is that easy. You kind of sign up and you're on your own. I've been there to field questions and help people through it if they have some issues with the computer and things like that. But other than that, it's really been a nice, easy process. Like I said, you might spend some money on marketing materials, but that's kind of up to you how you want to tackle that. Um, I, we are kind of lucky that I have the dual role of overseeing all our communications too. So it's very easy for me to access the website, our Facebook and Twitter pages, things like that, to get this information out. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty much it. I'll take any questions if you have it. I actually have a question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, the town doesn't get involved in any of the financing at all? No, not at all. All you're doing is advertising it on your website so that the resident can go to the website and if they choose to, they can use it or not use it. Yeah, exactly. We're okay. just promoting the platform. That was a that's little different it. than what he said. <laughs> but oh. that's all right. Who is uh, who is Energy Sage? Energy Sage. Who, who is Energy Sage? Uh, Sage, yeah. yeah. Uh, they're just, they're a company, they're a private company. They were set up, um, you know, just to be a centralized marketplace for solars. They do all the vetting of all the installers um, throughout the country. So it's not just specific to this area. And there's, you know, hundreds of installers that can apply to be a part of the Energy Sage program. And they came through Sustainable Jersey? For this particular program, yes. yes. And Sustainable Jersey does support the okay. Energy Sage plot. Got it. That makes more sense. I wanted to just also comment that at that meeting, uh, there were representatives from Sustainable Jersey, and they were asking us about updating our, or amending our ordinances or resolutions um, about this installation process. So I, the very next day, called our building inspector, and he said it wasn't necessary because it really is an inspection that the building inspector does and an, an electrical permit which is one of the most easiest permits to get. So again, we're seeing a lot of uh, residents in our uh, area doing solar panels. This just, if people are curious, they can go and see what the installation costs are. And this type of program would give you that range. Not, no commitment, no obligation. It just gives you that range to see um, if it's worth it for you to do. It's like solar mapping. When it's like GPS, I've done it myself, where you put in your address to see how much you can save in a year. Yeah, and they have all the tools through the site for you to ask any questions you want. You can, they have a ton of information on there to learn more about solar mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. They'll even tell you they have a specific tool they use to check your rooftops to see if you're even a good fit. Yeah. They take into account all the shading, everything right. like that. the direction. Mm -hmm. So they'll approve you within the system to keep going forward. Right. Do they provide the financing? No, that would actually be done through the installer or other agreements. One thing we did do was partner with Investors Bank in our town, and they offered to, you know, offer a special solar loan program. Well, that's good to know. No idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a question about Councilman McCarty with respect to the actual challenge portion. Uh, does that mean that we score better in the Sustainable Jersey ranking, or what, what is uh, that? Not so much that we. That? It we uh, well okay, even Rose, um, with Verona, we we accrue points. So if we accept this challenge and and launch it for the municipality, you can accrue points for implementing the program. So it's I guess it's a ranking because there are different levels: bronze, silver. Yeah, in the sustainable Jersey application, there's different levels of the solar initiative you can take um, to get more points. I think it's. 10 and 20 even for more innovative things. So you could tuck this within that. 
in regards to this, you don't. You could almost drop the challenge part of it. Mm -hmm. That was specific to the Ener uh, so Sustainable Jersey program that was launched that we took part in. Um, but I do kind of like the word still in there. If you have the West Orange Solar Challenge, of course. you know, it puts it out there. And countywide, there is a big push. We're trying, you know, to really get people to stand behind, you know, the adoption of solar energy. I have a follow-up real quick, um, not to get too technical. What are the options that exist? Uh, roof uh, panels, uh, panels in the, in the yard, in the backyard. What kind of options are out there? The what have you seen from your... The most popular is going to be your rooftop, you know, standard panel. Now, that's come a long way with technology and everything. Uh, recently, Solar City and Tesla just unveiled new panels that are much sleeker, low profile. Mm -hmm. You almost don't even notice they're on the roof anymore. So aesthetically, maybe a little more pleasing. So there are those options out now. We do have a, a business in town that has uh, ground mount panels also. He actually runs entirely on solar energy. So that's another good thing is you could push your businesses towards this program also, not just residential. So there's a, a ton of options out there. It mm -hmm. kind of, it's whatever you choose, whatever you're looking for. I see Joe Alper in the audience. Maybe we should push solar panels in the new development area. <laughs> yeah. In the parking area, Joe, we could do that. Okay. I know. Yeah. So, uh, uh, one more question. Uh, no, no. If, if He's so anxious. No, I'm fine. Uh, the savings, right? So, so the savings that you realize will go towards paying the cost of the equipment, possibly, and whatever loan you get from the bank? Yeah, there's a few different options people could take. And this is really where they want to be careful and really look at the contracts. I will say that. You really want to read your contracts carefully. Mm -hmm. You can do where you can just buy it outright. So you own the panel, you reap all the benefits from it, which is ideal if you can make it happen. Now, it is kind of expensive. So there's also you can get a loan, which you could go through a bank or some of the Backup installers list. offer financing also, where you still own the system, but you pay a monthly payment. Or there's a lease or a PPA agreement. Um, those are typically where we've seen some issues, to be perfectly honest with you. Just the contracts can read a little funny and trick people and you end up, you might end up paying a little bit more with that option. That option, you don't own the panels. You might get stuck having to maintain them. So you're not really reaping much of the benefit or as much of the benefit. It is still great, you know, green-wise, environmentally, it's great, the more solar, the better. But the company is getting most of the benefits from it. You will see a reduction in your energy bill but it's not as big of a savings as you could get if you own the system. Got it. Very, very um, informative. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Councilman. Sorry, Councilman. No, 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 that's okay, uh, Councilman. Um, question, do you get feedback from your residents? I mean, do you have like an update, like so often, you know, getting feedback from the residents, their savings, their maintenance, any issues, do you get that from them? Uh, yeah, and <laughs> not necessarily through this platform, but I do, people know that I'm kind of overseeing the program and reach out to me directly, and I've met with several people. I've actually read through some contracts with people and talked about, you know, similar programs outside of this also. So yeah, you know, you will get feedback from your residents, ideally. And with this program, they actually, you also have uh, full control over the analytics and, and data. So it'll update you every time someone signs into to the system. It'll tell you, you know, how many quotes they're actively receiving, if they decide to go solar, if not, why they didn't go solar. So it's really useful data to have right at your fingertips. Do you, do you also act sometimes as like if a person has a problem with their company that they went with you, they reach out to you to get some assistance or some guidance? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, not that much, but I have met with a couple people who had some issues and we kind of worked through it. They ended up not going solar because it wasn't going to be worth it for them, but it definitely it does come up. Okay, and just the last part is the question what's the overall impact from the residents of your township? What's, what have what's been, been saying? the impact, or do you think what, just in general, what, the, what do they think? What, the, what their reactions have been, what they, how they feel about the program? I think for the most part, it's been pretty positive. I think because it is very easy, they can go in and kind of just do their own thing. There's no pressing issue. We just put There's the information no out. Mm -hmm. If you want to take part in it, you're more than welcome. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you could just leave it, and there's no pressure there. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Councilwoman? Thank you. Just a quick question. Um, so you have a lot of older homes in Verona mm -hmm. as well as we do here in West Orange. Do you see those homes a fit for the solar panels as well as the newer homes? From my perspective, I'm not too sure to be perfectly honest with you. I know 
most of the rooftops should be all right structurally. It's whether the, the shingles will need to be updated before installing solar. That can come up. Um, that you, they'd have to talk about with the actual installer to see what that lifespan is. And do they do a cost analysis on how long it will take to pay off with the savings for the? Yes, for the that's one of the first things you can get back is okay. is all that pricing will be sent right to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Steve, just a, thank you. Just a general reminder, everybody, to try to speak into the microphones. Not you, oh, Ms. Okay. Neal. You're doing a great job. Just, just a reminder. <laughs> Uh, Councilman Cirilla, did you have another question? Yeah, just just to follow up, uh, my mic wasn't working. Uh, and Steve, I, I just want to thank you. I know that the life of a public servant can be a long, long day, huh? Long day. Sometimes, yep. Thank I have another meeting here. right after this. Thank you for being here for sharing this with us, and uh, I appreciate it. I, I, I'm sure the rest of the council does as well. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what, what, what we can do in town. Uh, Good. Yeah, you have a perfect house because you have. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm interested. And you mentioned also, Councilman, Councilman Cirillo mentioned too about businesses because that's also another program. I, Steve has been so accessible and having the meetings in Verona, it's just an education for all of us. Uh, they, there was also a New Jersey State Registry for Green Businesses. Um, I did present to the Chamber Board, um, again, Verona uh, already implemented this plan. So I'm learning as we move along uh, through programs that they have implemented and how we can do it here to recognize businesses for these green features in the checklist. So there's a lot going on. I just want, um, thank you. I just wanted to add one more thing and you spoke about businesses. We do have a very large uh, business in the township of West Orange that is totally solar and that is select towing. Mm -hmm. And their whole facility is totally solar energy. They run their whole shops and it, it facility through solar energy and I know John McElroy, he was the president and owner of Select Towing, would love to show anybody, any business that is interested, he would love to show the facility. So anybody that's interested, yeah. just let us know or reach out to John McElroy at Select Towing or to the Downtown West Orange Alliance and uh, he'll show you exactly how he enjoys his solar energy. Yeah, I would say on that same note, you know, ask your neighbors to go in and see it. Most of the time people will want to show it off and let you know mm -hmm. how the process went. Yeah. Thank you yeah. again. Thank yeah. you for being here. Thank All you. Right. Thank you very much. I'll Thanks, be right next door right. if there's anything you guys need. Great. All right. Keep us posted. Thank you, Mr. Neal. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Mr. Sayers. Yes. Redevelopment. What's new, please? Downtown redevelopment. I'll tell you what, it's moving along as usual. As I said, the sewers are getting hooked up, the electricity is being hooked in. As you can see from the outside, all the window frames are almost completed, so yeah. they're getting ready to install windows. Um, they're moving right along with the framing on the inside of the building. The retail all the residential is moving very quickly. And um, again, like I said, the, um, they're talking about possibly being able to do something with the R over R by August wow. or September. So uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed. As you see, the penthouse apartments are coming yeah, along pretty well nice. also, so they're, they're, they're moving pretty quickly. Thank God. Any questions? Council? Yes. Uh, Mr. Sarris, thank you. Uh, you know what my question is going to be. Have they gotten back to you <laughs> with any uh, marketing uh, materials? I did not get anything back on marketing materials, but to be honest with you, I did not follow up since the last meeting. <laughs> so I will follow up with them tomorrow, and I will get back to you. Yeah, I just like to get an idea, you know, sure. and I think the rest of the township and my council <laughs> colleagues would like to get an idea how they're going to market and sell the, the you know, the, yeah. the um, facility. But thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, and one last thing. Could they do like a little bigger sign on, you know, of what it's going to look like? A bigger sign? On the build, you know, on the outside to show what it's going to look like. I mean, they have a nice little banner there, but you, you go by there and you really, you know, have to blink twice. But if they could do something about, you know. I think I will speak to them now. I think it'd be, it would be a nice gesture. You know, sure. it would look nice and I think the residents would enjoy it too. Sure. Thank you. Councilwoman? Um, any plans in the near future where they'd have to close off Main Street to do any of the work with the sewers or the road work? Main Street right now is where the DPW is because we're doing, they're doing sewers there okay. for now. Okay. Good to know. So that's all I know about as of right now. 
Okay, and when that does is going to start to happen, would they? Yeah, they, they usually would they do that after traffic hours in the morning it or? It depends. Okay. It depends. Depends on what it is, whether it's street lighting, which would be PSEG, whether it's you know New Jersey water, which would be on, on the ground. It, it depends on what time they would. But do they it. probably try to accommodate. They usually best they could. give me a heads up on that okay. when it's going to be. Thank you. Uh, any? Oh, go ahead. Uh, well, not. I don't want to change the subject, but actually, I do want to change the subject because I, we do see how positive this is and how it's moving along. But I was also stopped at the light at Valley and uh, Northfield, and I saw St. Mark's, and just to see uh, the work that's happening over there. Uh, I don't know if you have any. Is that what you were going to ask? St. Mark's <laughs> has been approved by the Star Preservation Commission. Yeah, great. Um, and Mr. Tracy is now waiting for the final plans from their new architect for the roof. So hopefully we'll get those within the next couple of days and get more than that. That's great. Yes, last, last week the Historic Preservation Commission voted to provide a certificate of appropriateness right. for the roof, uh, which is a major element of the restoration. And one of the, one of the elements of the plan is to actually save a, a small portion of the roof as it originally was right. uh, so that it's sort of typical in, in these sort of restorations as you try to save a little bit of the old part of the building. And that was one of the elements I think would be very interesting. But it's going to look remarkably like uh, what it's looked like for the last mm -hmm. 50, 60 years. Uh, yeah, did, we're just waiting to get the plan. Yes. We don't have the plan yes. Uh, just to get back to downtown redevelopment very quickly, uh, briefly, is there anything new on the bonding process? Or on Not, the phases no, two and three. We are still reviewing their invoices, and they haven't been signed off on yet. But once we complete reviewing the invoices and we're comfortable with them, then we will sign off on that and start distributing some of the bonding. Okay. Anything on uh, phases two and three? Not really. Um, you know, there's some preliminary discussions. Nothing major. I think what they want to do is get this first phase pretty much off the ground and get the bonding in place and everything else. I'm hoping to have something within the next month or so. Okay. Right, right. That's what I said. Could we get Mr. Trink a microphone, please? <laughs> okay. He said the same thing I said. Oh, okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, council liaison uh, Discussion and uh, Councilman Garina has asked to Thank start you. us off. Thank you, Council President. Thank you to my colleagues. Um, just a first note, you know, from the first year I was elected four years ago to the Township Council, we thought of pedestrian safety as one of the most important issues facing our residents in the township and our issues, particularly our students. Just to give you an update about the, um, as I was, I've been always been pushing for a traffic light at Alicia Drive, just to let the residents know and the members here in the chamber tonight, they know that the project is moving forward. Our township engineer is processing the paperwork to submit did it, the county engineer to ask the request of a warrant for to put in the traffic light at Alyssa Drive. So that's moving forward. We've done our research. I met with our township engineer, Mr. Lepore. I met with the county engineer and it will be moving forward. Some issues will have to be done, but it's moving a lot further ahead and we should hopefully have a light in, in the very near future. And I appreciate the Board of Education's non-binding uh, comment and support of the light. And it's something I've been pushing since my first election and it's coming to, to fruition. Uh, the next thing is, is that uh, this Thursday, if people see this, but uh, will be our monthly West Orange Pedestrian Safety Advisory Board meeting to be held at the Educational Center at Turtle Bag Zoo, 7.30 p.m. Uh, it's going to be a big meeting because the towns in the area have been very impressed with what they've seen in West Orange and they've asked to come to our meeting uh, to see how we move forward a lot of our agenda. Uh, we have handouts for them and uh, two important people will also be at the meeting. There will be Mr. William Zarab from the North Jersey Transportation Planning uh, Authority and Cindy Steiner from New Jersey Bike and Walk Coalition. So they'll be at our meeting. The public is there. You please come to uh, get any questions you may have answered to see how we're moving our safe streets, complete streets along. Something that the whole board is very, very proud of. 
and also Mr. Lepore will make an update of how we're doing our road diet in front of the Edison Museum on Main Street, which is another cooperative project with the uh, County of Essex. And we thank the County uh, Engineering Department and the County uh, for supporting us in our effort to uh, make West Orange a safer community for residents and for motorists alike. Um, the people at the meeting will be members from Glen Ridge, Montclair, Verona, Cedar Grove, Bloomfield, Nutley, and I just got a call today from Milburn. They would like to attend our meeting, so it's going to be a, a real good time. If the, re the residents are, it's a public meeting, you're more invited to, to come. Uh, an update on our rent house the, um, the new uh, windows, the testing of the new windows will be going in very shortly, so we can see what windows will be the best windows, because the building's 50 years old and it needs windows, and for savings and an energy port to things, so the windows will be going in. Uh, and also just remember that June 3rd, I keep saying it, is our street fair Edison Day. Uh, it's going to be a great time. We have 11 food trucks already. Uh, there's going to be seven foot robots uh, traversing uh, Main Street, our classic car show vendors, and the Edison Laboratory, our, national, our pride in West Orange, will be open free to the public. Uh, so we hope you'll come by and, and have a great time and, and enjoy it. Also, just one note from uh, the uh, West Orange uh, Friends of the Thomas Edison is that right now um, Glenmont is in the, in the throes of being uh, revamped re and renovation for a new roof, interior painting and wallpaper and restoration just so, and it has to be done um, uh, within the guidelines of historic preservation so the house won't be opened till sometime June, July, uh, and then it'll be sporadic uh, opening. But just to let you know, that these are the things that the National Park Service is doing for one of our other treasures in the Welland Park is Thomas Edison's uh, family home. They're making it more handicap accessible. They're putting in safer walkways, lighting, uh, so it'll be a better experience for all people who come to visit uh, the National Park. Um, also, I want to make a shout out to Troop 2, uh, West Orange Boy Scouts. I was asked to speak last night to them about citizenship and government service and civic-minded thing and uh, they had me there for an hour and a half and they had some great questions uh, and we should be very proud of them and I told them they should come to a council meeting. Uh, they're not that boring, I said, but come and see the wheels of government <laughs> moving uh, and I think they'll take me up on it but I just want to thank the, um, the scout leaders and the troop themselves for inviting me uh, to come and talk about the the efforts and, and, and the pleasure and, and the humbleness of being an elected official and that you need to volunteer. You can't just say one day you're going to get up and say, well, I want to be a councilman. Well, you, you can't really do that because you have to participate in the community. You've got to volunteer, just as a lot of us around this table have done over the years that we knew our community, we knew our residents, and they enjoyed that. And I told them even being a Boy Scout and even being a Cub Scout, that's volunteering and being involved in your community. So uh, let's always be there and a big shout out for our, our Boy Scouts. And uh, thank you, Council President. Thank you. Anybody? Uh, Councilman? Thank you, Council President. Um, your mic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I gotta get you tape. There you go. Put your phone oh, on yeah. it. Put your phone on there. Phone on it. <laughs> uh, yes, you know what, speaking of the uh, Edison uh, Museum, uh, BMW just installed uh, four charging stations. Nice. Uh, BMW is going to go around the nation installing charging stations for electric vehicles, and uh, our site was chosen as the first site in the country to, to be a, an official BMW charging station. So now, uh, you know, we have four charging stations, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's ironic, I guess, because uh, that's where the battery was originally invented, so uh, there's uh, so many connections uh, and such a, such a long history and story. So anyhow, uh, I also want to talk about uh, uh, OSPAC, Oscar Schindler Performing Arts Center. Uh, the calendar is coming out. Uh, the first event, mark this in your calendars, June 24th. June 24th, the third annual Latin Night. Latin Night open to the entire community. Just come out. Uh, there's going to be some music, some dancing. Uh, uh, Spanish band, La Orquesta Caribeña, uh, Merengue, Bachata, and Salsa. So come out and dance, learn how to dance. Uh, I know Jerry's going to be there. Uh, he's, he never misses uh, Latin night. So again, it's June 24th at Oscar Schindler Performing Arts Center. It's a Saturday. Bring, bring, uh, bring a lawn chair and just hang out bring the kids. Have a good time. Uh, the next uh, issue I want to talk about, uh, thank you, uh, Councilman, uh, is um, New Jersey Transit Meeting. Uh, I just saw a, a 
town attorney Richard Trink in the audience, uh, and uh, Joe Alper was just here. Uh, they're uh, talking to the Department of State about sitting down with, uh, we're going to sit down with the um, New Jersey Transit uh, to talk about and speak about the, uh, uh, hopefully, the opening of that train station for uh, a direct line to uh, Manhattan. As you know, right now, there's only one stop on Saturdays. We want to see if we can continue lobbying so that ultimately, not only uh, would there be uh, infrastructure uh, investment, but um, to make it a destination for our commuter population and residents that want to travel to Manhattan, but also um, have a Delhi uh, uh, line uh, going in uh, directly in the mornings. Right now, the train doesn't stop. It goes from South Orange to Orange, East Orange, and into, um, into, into the city. Uh, so uh, again, thank you, uh, uh, Richard and, uh, and Joe, for setting that up, and that's upcoming. Uh, we're going to continue working on that issue. Uh, we spoke about the uh, senior citizen homes. I sit on the John Degnan House. We had a meeting this past Thursday. We talked about quality of life issues, lease, lease issues to make sure that everyone is enjoying the facility, uh, making sure that everyone's following the lease. Uh, Frank uh, uh, Capron is the chairperson, and Debbie Salonori, thank you. Anytime we have issues, we contact Debbie. Uh, Debbie's doing a good job. So, Council President, that's the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman, Carly? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Do you want to go or may go? Okay. Flip a coin. <laughs> yeah, took it out. Okay. Um, all right, so next Sunday, or this coming Sunday already, April 30th, the Friends of the West Orange Public Library have an evening celebration fundraiser. Are you going to speak to that, <coughs> Mr. Sweeney? You want me to stop right here, or I don't want to steal your thunder? Okay, from 5.30 to 7.30, come please out to support uh, the Friends group. We'll be partnering with West Orange Arts Council. There will be artwork for sale as well during this event, all proceeds to go to the two entities. Um, members are $20 per person and non-members $30 and includes dinner and refreshments. There will be raffles, so it's a good time for all. So we hope you could all come out and celebrate a year of the West Orange French Group. And I'll let Mr. Sweeney elaborate on that uh, when he comes to the podium. Um, great news. I uh, talked to our Director of Health, uh, Teresa Denova, this afternoon. Uh, we were approved for the grant from Partners with in Health for a Senior Citizen Service Study. Excellent. Which I'm very excited about. So um, she will be making plans on how she's gonna facilitate that. Um, she will um, probably come to the, well, she definitely will come to the council when she's ready and she has her plan to put forth. Um, what will happen is all the various stakeholders in town will, um, will come and, um, you know, we'll distri help distribute all the information. Um, Mr. Nova will uh, chair that, and we'll get that information out so we could have a full study for, for all our seniors in the township. So details will come out um, in about a month or so on how that is gonna be facilitated, but it's very exciting. Um, once that study is completed and the data is gathered, uh, we're eligible to um, apply for a larger grant uh, with Partners in Health in the fall. So very exciting. Um, so I'd like to thank you know, various uh, people, Ms. Nova, for all hard work on the, on the grant and uh, Patty Duffy. And uh, you know, also talking with folks at Montclair State, they're gonna help facilitate it. Ms. Morelli, thank you. You've also mentioned in, in uh, times past up here how Montclair has been very actively involved in this. And it's all, it, it takes time. It's a lot of steps to get to move forward, um, but we're going in the right direction. It'll be great information that will be gathered and collected and uh, it'll benefit our community. So it's all exciting. And uh, Teresa will be here, as I said, in a month or so to give us a presentation on how she will facilitate uh, the grant. Um, also, I want to thank uh, my former colleagues that were here this evening from the school board for coming out on important uh, for Autism Awareness Month and all the great work that they do in our special needs program for our children in, in the district. Um, also for last uh, week, uh, West Orange High School, they hosted our Senior Citizen Prom, which was a lovely event. I was so disappointed because I couldn't get out of work and I couldn't attend it. I usually try to get there. But if you look on uh, YouTube, on, I think it's on Facebook and on the uh, school district website, you'll see clips of the event. And it's just a great time. The kids have a blast. 
with our residents, a lot of dancing, and a lot of fun that they have every year. And it's a really, really, really great event, bridging our community, our students together, and uh, just you know having our students appreciate what our community is all about. And again, thank you also to uh, my colleagues. I know Laura Lab uh, spearheaded that uh, resolution for Alyssa Drive for the um, for the light. And just so my colleagues know, I had sent it along to Mr. Sayers um, because it was suggested that we too also get a resolution together. So I believe you're going to send that off to Mr. Trank um, so we could uh, get that uh, done. I mean, that's a long time coming. I thank you. Uh, to to uh, pedestrian safety committee for you know working on that uh, it's something the school board's been looking at for I know a good you know five years or so so I, I'd want to thank Ms. Lab for efforts there and uh, to all involved so hopefully a lot of good things will be coming down the pike it sounds like over the summer months thank you Council President Councilwoman okay so last night there was a promotion ceremony here for the police and fire so just congratulations and best wishes to uh, firefighter John Gibson promoted to fire captain and police officer uh, James Bett promoted to police sergeant. So we just wish them the best in their job. Um, uh, Victor just mentioned BMW installing four electric charging stations at the Thomas Edison National Historic Park. That is going to be open to the public. They are four stations. They're going to be free to the public, and it's not just for BMW electric charging, uh, electric vehicles. Those are for all makes and models. And BMW, um, this is our pilot, as you mentioned, that this is the first um, installation across the nation. They're looking to install 100 at national parks uh, across the country. And they're going to um, allow it to be free for the first six months. So that's, that's their commitment uh, so far. So that's great for our, our national treasure here on Main Street. Um, I wanted to also just some save the dates. The, you mentioned OSPAC also. We have the West Orange PR Commission and the Chamber of Commerce and Township Organizations hosting a health and wellness fair at OSPEC, the Oscar Schindler Performing Arts Center, uh, Sunday, May 21st from 1 to 4. Please go to the town website to register for that. Uh, Chamber and Downtown West Orange Alliance um, members, only $25. Township organizations, 35 and non-members, of course, you can join the chamber. Um, the fee is $45 um, to, to uh, secure a space there. Um, May 21st, between 1 and 4. Uh, I also want you to save the day for the Chamber Community Awards Dinner. That's going to be held at the Manor. This is the annual event on May 17th from 6 to 9. At the Community Awards Dinner, the Chamber recognizes an Educator of the Year, Firefighter of the Year, and a Police Officer, and a Business of the Year. This year, the Educator of the Year is Deb Cohen from West Orange High School. The Fire Chief has been nominated to be the Firefighter to be recognized and honored this year. Uh, Pat Matula from the Police Department will be the Police Officer, and this is a nomination of your peers. So. Um, it's a very nice honor. And the business of the year this year is JAG, um, JAG Physical Therapy on Eagle Rock Avenue. This is one of 15 uh, physical therapy centers that John has opened in uh, New Jersey. And uh, tomorrow night is, uh, I'm sorry, next Wednesday is our planning board meeting. Just about a little while ago, I received the um, Agenda, uh, the planning board will meet the first, they meet the first Wednesday of each month here in Town Hall at 7.30. Next meeting is next Wednesday. We have a res resolution approving the uh, Valley Road residential uh, extension. Uh, you mentioned Joe Albert, that he's here already. Uh, the applications, there's one from Crestmont Country Club. One will be, again, I only have an agenda. I don't have the actual applications. GBSJ Properties, this is at 303 Mount Pleasant Avenue. Um, so it looks like uh, new construction, excuse me, new construction at the old Mount Fuji restaurant. Uh, the Essex County Turtleback Zoo, I'll leave this for Anthony, but uh, we have a courtesy hearing on the penguin exhibit construction. And uh, there will be a presentation, presentation from our um, attorney, planning board attorney, and Paul Greigel, our planner, on the proposed Senate number 2788, 
State of New Jersey 217th Legislature modifies requirements for preliminary site plans and subdivisions under municipal land use. Land use. The discussion um, will be continued from April 5th, and that's on the master plan reexamination, um, the process um, to get that started. So we have not started inviting stakeholders in as of yet. We have to organize and plan and prepare for that. So that's next Wednesday, May 3rd, 7.30. Everyone's invited. Oh, no, no, no. One more. Oh, Sorry. Sorry, one more. <laughs> I, you know, this is a thank you. I guess it's a personal touch I have to do. Um, my husband happens to be the chair of the Open Space Commission, and with a grant or an award of 500 trees from the New Jersey Tree Foundation, uh, he spearheaded the planting of 500 trees at uh, six acres that the Open Space Commission uh, purchased, acquired, uh, a few years back, uh, 577 Mount Pleasant Avenue across from the recycling center. Um, there were over 100 people there. Uh, again, it was just a Facebook invitation to invite people there out. Email blasts went out. We had groups from Seton Hall Prep. You mentioned the Boy Scouts. We had PAC uh, 10, okay. PAC 107. Um, Girl Scouts are going to be invited uh, also. Uh, because it's not over yet. 500 trees is a lot of trees, <laughs> so it's not over. Many were potted. There, uh, there were lots of different jobs there. We had students, two different groups came out of Seton Hall University and students out of Princeton. Bless you. Princeton, God bless you. It's true. What I'm saying is true. Um, so <laughs> um, it was just a great, uh, a great event. So uh, congratulations. Joe, my colleague Joe, is also on the commission, and he was there. Um, you can you can say more, but I, I thought for a second there you were going to leave me that low-hanging fruit, but yeah. you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason it's going to take so long to plant 500 trees, even though there must have been oh, close kidding. to 100 people there, it was it was an amazing event because. It wasn't great weather on Saturday, yeah, right. and right. it was amazing how many people turned out. We had, uh, I, I can't even acknowledge everybody, but we had right. food that was donated. Resident, we had plenty of residents and friends. Right. Yeah. Yep. But the reason it's going to take a long time to plant 500 <laughs> trees is because the, the location is known affectionately as the rock, and it's really difficult to break through the rock in order to plant these trees. And so it, it's... Uh, it's really a challenge to do that. I, uh, I thought I was going to have to call an ambulance to take me home, or at least across the street to get to my car. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, I had Advil in my pocket. So. Uh, I just wanted to announce that the 13th annual Men Who Cook uh, fundraiser has been scheduled for Sunday, June 11th, at the Paris Center at St. Joseph's in Benvenue. So we're calling all chefs. <laughs> who want to show off their expertise and bring along uh, their families and their posses to, uh, to also uh, help raise money for uh, scholarships for kids from West Orange uh, going on to college. And if uh, the tickets are $25 for adults, uh, $15 for students, and $10 for children, if you want any additional information or if you want to buy tickets, get tickets from me, you can, uh, or you could call 973-671-1158. And I'm just going to ask everybody up here on the podium, you can hear that buzzing. If you have a device that's sending out radio signals, if you could move it as far away from the microphones as possible, it will help because when you're listening, when you're listening to uh, the video uh, of this, either uh, public access TV or, or uh, internet, it, it can drive you crazy. It can drive you crazy. So thank you, everyone. I so just, I'm going to just finish up with that. Sure. May I? Um, I'm leaving. We had books printed up for this event on Saturday with the Township of West Orange. It was an Earth Day event. Um, again, very pleased with the success of it. But these little booklets I'm leaving here in uh, Town Hall for you to pick up. But just some of the trees that were planted, a flowering dogwood, white oak, pin oak, sweet gum, red maple, white pine, Norway spruce, and eastern red cedar. 
So this really is a conceptual plan to create eight different types of gardens on these six acres. And there is an already, uh, there is a detention basin up there already that we're hoping to clear and make an outdoor amphitheater or an outdoor classroom. So it's really an, a beautiful plan that was put together with a grant through the Environmental Commission, $1,500 grant to secure a landscape architect, Heidi Cohen, who was the chair of the um, Historic Preservation Commission for many years. And, uh, we broke some architect. rocks together on Saturday, yes. And, <laughs> and um, she was very helpful, very informative, and our former chair of the planning board, Ben Heller. So that was very, very helpful. So when you asked me to move my phone, I just also want to let people know that Luna Stage on Valley Road, um, their production, world premiere, uh, production of Tranquil is um, written by Andrew Rosendorf. Rosendorf. It will be showing between uh, April 13th, now through May 13th. So please go to Lunar Stage, look at their schedule. Um, uh, the first sentence says, paralyzed in a car accident that claimed her mother's life, a 17-year-old Ellen is determined to experience her teenage years, all of her years that they have to offer. Um, sounds very deep and very heavy, but as you know, if you've been to Luna Stage, their performances are always outstanding. So check it out. Yes. Thanks. And that concludes our conference agenda. Uh, Madam Clerk. This is to inform the general public that this meeting is being held in compliance with Section 5 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law. 1975, the annual notice was emailed to the Star-Ledger <coughs> and filed in the Township's Clerk's Office on November 28, 2016 and published in the West Orange Chronicle on December 8, 2016. Councilwoman Casalino. Present. Council Cir Councilman Cirillo. Present. Councilman Garino. Present. Councilwoman McCartney. Present. Council President Krakowiak. Present. Will everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The council is now in the public meeting. Uh, first agenda item is public comment. If there is anyone who wishes to speak, please raise your hand. I'll recognize you. You'll have five minutes to come speak at the lectern. Uh, please start off by uh, giving your name and the spelling of your last name as well as your address and you'll have five minutes to speak on whatever you'd like to. Mr. Brick. Thank you. Mike Brick, 19 Colony Drive West, West Orange, 44 years, fully paid up in my taxes. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's good to know. <laughs> uh, uh, I'd like to speak to the council as the chairman of the Environmental Commission. Um, we are continuing on this spring with our uh, seed program for milkweed for monarch butterflies. Last year, we distributed thousands and thousands of seeds to the township and through the Board of Ed, and it was a, it was a successful program. Um, last year, we had plants. This year, we only have seeds. Um, we'll be receiving 40,000 preconditioned seeds. They're put in cold storage, wet, so that they will germinate well. Without that, there's a tiny percentage of germination. With that, you get like 90% germination. So it'll be advertised. We'll do it through the school system. We'll do it through organizations. We'll do it through with some associations of condominiums that have asked for milkweed. And this is the swamp eastern milkweed that coincides with the migration pattern of the monarchs. Um, when I spoke with the, um, the foundation that supplies the seeds a few days ago, he was amazed at the program. He said there aren't many towns in the United States that have a program like this. And I was quite surprised. And he said, would you please send us pictures and tell us how you're doing it. We'll put you in our national publication. You guys are rock stars. <laughs> and I was really pleasantly shocked when I heard this because to us it just seems like this is the least we can do, not the most we can do. There's thousands of species that are becoming extinct all over the planet. 
the monarch is one of those species that is beautiful, that is unique, that everybody knows and appreciates, and it's the icing on the cake. But the cake is collapsing. And what we need to do and will do with the school system is give information to them and to the township that if we don't support our environment, it won't support us. And we are part of the environment. So it seems that this is a frivolous type of situation to many people. Oh, you're planting milkweed, which is a, a, a weed and a big deal. Well, the milkweed is killed because of agribusiness putting out Roundup, killing off all the weeds in the fields. And the side, not the side effect, the main effect is yes, it preserves the crops, but what it does by killing the weeds, it kills the bugs, which kills the birds, which kills off things, species like monarch butterflies that will only use milkweed to propagate themselves. So it's, a, it's a, a good example of a being good stewards to the planet and I'm glad we're doing it again. It's inexpensive for us to do and you'll see this program roll out in May because it's too premature to plant them now. So when you see that milkweed plant and you get sticky fingers from breaking it open, um, there's a reason for it. And the other reason is that the monarch butterflies overwinter in Mexico about 100 miles from Mexico City up in the mountains. And all the monarchs way east of the Mississippi from Canada to Florida and east to the Mississippi go to this one place. And they overwinter there, lay their eggs and die. But if they don't make it through the winter, there's no eggs in the spring. And last year there was a freak snowstorm and all the work that was done to preserve the species, half of them died on these mountains in Mexico because of this freak snowstorm. So we just need to have people know that it's important to plant them in your yard, in your garden, um, in public places, in churches, because the monarchs need it and we need them. So thank you very much and I just wanted to explain this program to everyone. Thank you, Mr. Rick. Is there any questions? Thank you, Mr. Rick. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Please raise your hand. Mr. Sweeney, please come down. Is there's anybody else who'd like to speak? Uh, please raise your hand and come on down to the front, please, so we'll save some time. Good evening. My name is Gerald Sweeney. I live at 24 Oak Bend, West Orange. I'm the president of the Friends of the West Orange Public Library. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Casolino mentioned the celebration that we have on April 30th, Sunday, uh, afternoon, it's open, it's open to friends and people who want to come. It's a paid event, but I wanted to tell you one thing about what we're celebrating there is the virtual transformation of the library, exterior and now interior. People don't know about the interior. You can see the bricks on the outside, that's pretty easy to see. You go inside now, the lower level, you, we sometimes call it base, but it's not. It's a lower level, there's windows, used to be filled up with um, historic uh, materials <laughs> and other uh, old equipment. That has been removed. We've created probably about 1,500 square feet of new meeting space. It's beautiful, it's been painted, it's been cleaned out. A uh, celebration is there, and we're gonna be thanking all the people, the Township Council, the mayor, the director of the library, the board of the, um, uh, for the library, the friends, and the other supporters of the library. The library is important and it's been transformed and we want to celebrate. Again, it's open, but uh, that's what uh, I wanted to alert you to it. Um, second thing is I just want to alert you of an event coming up. Uh, one of the things we've done at the library, we try to have uh, educational programs. We had a program on immigration rights. On May 15th, we have a program on the rights under the New Jersey law against discrimination, which prohibits discrimination on a whole range of factors, race, age, creed, color, national organ, origin, sex, bias, uh, this is a whole, uh, uh, gender bias, there's a whole range of things, and it covers public accommodations, housing, employment, 
and uh, contracting. So it impacts on a huge amount of things. And we're also going to touch on some of the issues of uh, what we call implicit bias. That's the bias you sort of learn from being a kid or your association, you don't often know about it. And we have as our prime speaker is Philip Freeman, who is the assistant director of the New Jersey Division on Civil Rights in the Attorney General's office. He's going to be here with his staff. Uh, we also have a little bit of a homegrown uh, group. We have, not group, a person. We've invited Dennis McCall, and I don't know if people know who Dennis McCall is. Dennis McCall has recently attended training programs uh, in the police department. He's a sergeant in the West Orange Police Department under an initiative in the state Police departments have to teach, train, and alert all of their police to the issues of this implicit bias and other bias and teach against it. He, Dennis, has been trained in this thing and the West Orange Police Department is going to be launching a program that will train all of the police and continue to train and update on how to avoid, uh, how to avoid uh, bias. Uh, so that's going to be on uh, uh, May 15th at the library. Uh, right now it's scheduled to begin around 6.30. The time may be uh, adjusted, but I hope you'll all be there. And I also, one final thing is I want to say that in setting up this uh, celebration, it's always more complicated, but the West Orange Clerk's Office uh, has been particularly helpful, of course, the uh, several of the council people, uh, Councilwoman Michelle uh, Casolino, Councilman Joseph, Joe Kokoviak, uh, and uh, have really supported it. And the creation of that meeting space on the first floor, uh, Councilwoman Susan McCartney has really supported that. She's, she said you create the library as a, not just a library in the sense people think of books, but as a community center. So. And uh, I have to thank the clerk's office for not putting the timer on for five <laughs> minutes tonight. So. But, but thank you very much. Uh, that's my comment. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Lori? Is there anyone else who wants to speak? Please raise your hand. Come on down. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Lori Kapfer. I um, live at 65 Fitz Randolph Road in West Orange. Uh, last name is spelled K-A-P-F-E-R-E-R. -E -E um, I'm here tonight as a, I work for an organization, a nonprofit that's called Girls on the Run. It's a, um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the program tonight and actually offer an invitation to an event that we have coming up. Um, girls on the Run is a character development organization. Um, we work with girls who are in third through eighth grade. And we, what our mission is, we inspire girls to be joyful, healthy and confident. Uh, we use a, a fun curriculum that integrates running. So the girls um, in third through eighth grade, they meet with volunteer coaches twice a week for 10 weeks um, in the spring. We have a spring season and a fall season. And um, they work through this curriculum where they're focusing on bettering their health. It can be like physical health, like we talk about you know, fueling uh, their body so that they can run. Um, we talk about dealing with uncomfortable feelings, you know, emotions, uh, social media, gossip. We're trying to give the girls the tools that they'll need to kind of navigate um, their adolescent years and really um, reach for their dreams as they approach college and, and adulthood. Um, so running is kind of used, uh, and physical activity is used as a way to reinforce the lesson topics that we work through with the girls. And at the end of the season, the girls complete a 5K, which um, I don't know how many of you here have completed a 5K. It's, um, you know, for many of these girls, it's, you know, the first time that they attempt something like this. It can be very intimidating. Um, but what we hope is that they see that they, you know, they work really hard toward this goal and uh, they have mentors and friends who help them reach it. You know, they, and when they cross the finish line on 5K day, it's kind of you know, a magical experience um, that these girls see that they can work really hard towards something and hopefully achieve uh, you know, what, they, what they put their mind and their body to. Um, this season, we've been, uh, the, the program's nationwide. It started in North Carolina 20 years ago. It's been in this part of New Jersey for 17 years and we've, been, we've had a presence in West Orange for about five years. Uh, this season we have sites at Kelly and we have um, a couple sites at the Reservoir by the Zoo 
And we also have a site at uh, Washington Elementary for the first time, uh, which, yeah, we're really excited about that. Um, and, you know, there is a program fee associated with the program, um, and we do a lot of fundraising to try to offset the, the program cost, especially um, in, you know, we offer the program in some lower income areas such as Newark, Orange, East Orange, and we're trying to expand our reach in those areas, which is why we do a lot of fundraising. Um, you know, even the girls who are at Washington, um, you know, many, or I think actually all of them are receiving the program at a subsidized uh, cost this season. And so um, we are actually having a fundraiser that's coming up on May the 11th. Um, we were approached by a wealth strategies firm. This is a different kind of fundraiser than what we usually do. <laughs> we were doing a golf event this time. Um, it was, yeah, wealth strategies firm approached us and said, you know, would you like to be the beneficiary of a golf event that we'd like to help you organize? And you know, we said, well, this is a new challenge, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll try and see what, see what we can do. So it's on May the 11th. Um, the host is AEPG Wealth Strategies. Um, our honoree is Kevin Cummings, who's the president and CEO of uh, Investors Bank. And um, we really just invite any of you to come. You know, you don't have to love golf to come to the event. There is actually a golf clinic there for anybody who wants to learn how to golf. Um, and there is a dinner only ticket option. And you can learn more, you can uh, approach me after the meeting, or you can go to our website, which is uh, girlsontherunnj.org. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kapp, for uh, Ms. Silvestri. Is there anybody else who would like to speak? Please raise your hand. Come this on down. Young gentleman. Ah. Mm -hmm. You will be next, sir. Good evening, Claire Silvestri, 20 Grandview Avenue. Thank you to the council and mayor for taking time tonight to acknowledge the challenges faced by so many West Orange residents, especially children and young adults who are on the autistic spectrum. And I'm hoping that perhaps next year at World Autism Awareness Day, the town hall will be lit up in blue to help bring even greater awareness to this cause. I also want to add my personal thanks. I'm going to do a little shout out to some people, to educators, uh, child study team, and administrators and aides in the West Orange schools who give so much of themselves to help these young people work towards achieving their full potential. My son, Thomas, who is diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, has made progress beyond our wildest dreams, thanks to the help of many West Orange teachers and staff, particularly his case manager at West Orange High, Mr. Lee Cohen, um, Ms. Dawn Ribera, the um, uh, director of special services at the high school, um, Thomas's first case manager and now director of special services, Ms. Connie Salambino, and one can never forget the late, great Betty Maddalena. Thomas is now 23, and he is just a few credits away from achieving an associate's degree in culinary arts and sciences at County College of Morris. He's also received support and opportunities from countless members of the West Orange community along the way, such as student volunteers in the Rec Department's Footsteps program, Adam Goldman at Dunkin' Donuts, and most recently, Susan Hofberg, who is owners of Susie, who's the owner of Susie Q's Restaurant, who is sponsoring Thomas's college co-op. It's wonderful that in recognizing Autism Awareness Month, we celebrate all the good work that's being done now here in the town. But let's not forget that there's still much more to do. In fact, the theme for this year's Autism Awareness Month is uh, called Toward Autonomy and Self-Determination. In the past few decades, there's been a lot done by school districts to help the children on the spectrum through early intervention, education and social skills programs. But now a lot of these kids, like my son, are entering adulthood. And here's where our local governments need to accept the baton from the school districts and assume a greater role in providing a support network for these young autistic adults so that they can live pur purposeful lives and successfully meet the challenges of attaining full-time employment and living on their own. So I hope at the next council meeting or sometime in the very near future, we can have someone from the administration, perhaps our, our health director, explain what services and programs the township presently offers to adults with autism. As well as I would suggest we consider forming some kind of committee or advisory board like the pedestrian safety board to explore further ways that West Orange 
could assist these individuals in achieving greater self-sufficiency, including looking at areas such as job and social networking opportunities, legal advice, and transportation. Uh, thank you. And I just want to add um, about Men Who Cook. Uh, I've been attending that for years, and there are several members of uh, the town council and as well as Mr. Kayser who always cook and uh, it's a wonderful uh, if, if people want to see what our council members can do and our staff that, uh, that that's a very good fundraiser so thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ross <laughs> you're on. Please start with your name spell it and uh, address and speak your mind please. If you could just pull down the uh, microphones a little there you go. Great, thank you. My name is Harold Anthony Ross. Um, Welcome. Harold, H-A-R-O-L-D-R-O-S-S. -S. And um, I live on Forum Terrace, West Orange, New Jersey. And I just wanted to come up so that I can invite everybody here and in the town to um, to give pajamas for my pajama drive for um, abused kids who have been abused. I have a pledge form here that I can, I have a few of these that I can get to you for um, on Sunday, next Sunday. And um, I just, it's, it's important to me because it's not just about the requirement of it. It's important to me because it's for, it's for certain kids who've had a rough start in life and who are still going through a rough start. And I just want them to have a better start in life. Bravo. Bravo. Ms. Ross, before you leave, could you just repeat what the, your initiative is and perhaps move your uh, mouth a little bit closer to the microphone? You're a, a soft-spoken young man, so it's, I just want to make sure that everybody hears uh, what you're doing and also hears how, how to help, please. Um, I have a pledge form for a pajama drive for abused kids. Um, I have a few pledge forms where um, I would be able to get back to you for these pajamas next Sunday. And it's important for these kids. And I really hope that you can contribute. Purple. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Ross. If you want to leave the pledge forms on the, uh, on the table there, I'm Bet you there'll be some people that would be interested in picking them up. Okay. Great job, Pam. Thank you, you, Mr. Ross. Fine on your own. We'll make copies. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make, make copies. copies. Right. We'll make copies. Thank you, Harold. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Puglisi, the man who doesn't have to raise his hand. <laughs> Is there anyone else who wants to speak uh, at public comment? Please raise your hand. You always, say always try to come last, up last. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Anthony Puglisi, uh, representing County Executive Joe DiVincenzo. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank uh, Councilwoman McCartney for setting that stage. softball up for me. Uh, so, at, uh, first of all, at Turtleback Zoo, within the last couple weeks, We've opened several new exhibits, uh, the first being a, a new condor exhibit. Uh, we had one um, er, previously uh, that was uh, damaged during Sandy, uh, so it was recently redone, uh, actually it was rebuilt, so this is an entirely new exhibit. Uh, and then at the same time, uh, we uh, opened a new uh, giant ant eater and maned wolf exhibit. Uh, that takes the place of our uh, Scottish Highland cow exhibit. Uh, <clears throat> so. Some very interesting animals coming to Turtleback Zoo. Uh, also at our Wolf Woods, um, the exhibit was um, redesigned 
Uh, before, there were just uh, two windows that you could look into the exhibit to see the animals. Now it's uh, fully a full glass uh, enclosure, so there are no obstructions. Uh, gives it will give you a more panoramic view of uh, seeing those animals there. Uh, and then the two that uh, Councilwoman McCartney talked about, um, we're really uh, right now focusing on the African Adventure uh, exhibit area. So uh, uh, last year we introduced the wolves, uh, sorry, introduced the giraffes. The county executive would not appreciate me leaving at that. So in, <coughs> we introduced the uh, giraffes. Uh, in May, uh, we will introduce lions. Uh, and then uh, before the planning board is a new exhibit for our uh, South African penguins. Uh, they're currently located across from the Savannah Cafe. But the idea is to group animals uh, that come from the same continent together. So in that area, there will be a new uh, penguin exhibit. Taking the place of the penguins um, in their current site, it will be an exhibit for flamingos. Uh, so while you're enjoying a, a break from walking around Turtleback Zoo at the Savannah Cafe, you'll be able to look over. And not to say that penguins aren't attractive birds, but fl uh, pink flamingos uh, are <laughs> a little better scenery than the penguins. Uh, no offense to the penguins again. Um, and then also uh, just to uh, make you aware of um, June 3rd will be a busy day in West Orange. Uh, we have our 15th annual uh, open house plan for the zoo that day. Uh, that's from 10 to 2. It's free admission to the zoo. And uh, in addition to all the attra attractions that are there, we put up uh, information tables, uh, games and sorts to uh, just introduce people uh, to the various programs and services that the county offers. Um, so, we, uh, like I said, it's free admission and we do invite everyone to come out. Any, thank you. Councilman Greener, did you? Thank, thank you, Council uh, President. Um, Mr. Puglisi, I didn't want to steal the thunder from you, but oh. you would like to announce the, uh, the sure. county so initiatives on, for? On uh, Saturday, May uh, 6th, uh, at, uh, in Cedar Grove at the old hospital center site is the uh, Household Hazardous Waste uh, collection day uh, that goes from 8:30 to 4, uh, and then on May 20th, uh, which is also a Saturday, from 9 until 3, is the uh, computer electronics recycling uh, program. Uh, and then also in June, and I'm not remember what the date is. What is that? Uh, June 17th. June 17th. Uh, that one is going to be at our public works site uh, in Cedar Grove on Bradford Avenue, which is right around the corner is a used tire recycling day. So if you, like me, I had found six tires in my garage over the years, I was able to recycle them last year. Um, there's a lot of things in your house that you don't think of as being hazardous or think of could, uh, if they get into the general waste stream, could be dangerous to the environment. Uh, but things like paint and computers and even uh, household cleaners, things that you use in your garden, uh, there's a lot of chemicals and toxins uh, that, that shouldn't be brought to a, a regular disposal site. So at these three um, uh, recycling or collection days, uh, you can bring your stuff there. We always have ample staff to help you unload your car. In fact, when you drive up, you don't have to get out of your car. You can just drive up, pop the trunk. We have people who take the stuff out. And then you know that the material that you bring is being disposed of in, in an env environmentally friendly way. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't want to thank and you. And it's all free to uh, county residents. Thank you, Council President. Sure. I didn't want to take away Anthony's presentation. <laughs> the recycling program is absolutely amazing. I've used it a few times. Mm -hmm. You almost don't stop. You get you people from all over the county there, but they've got it so well run. Yeah. You're just in and out. It's it's not. You don't lose much of your Saturday by doing this. Mm -hmm. I just want to ask a question about the Ant Eater exhibit. Are there mm -hmm. any plans to rent out? the anteater to any <laughs> residents who, <laughs> who, pure, who yeah. every spring have problems with unwanted visitors? Uh, Interesting. Revenue source. <laughs> just a thought. Well, we'll have to think about that one. <laughs> right? Inter Interesting revenue source. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Council President. Is there anyone else who would like to speak of public comment? Seeing no hands, I will close public comment and invite uh, any of my colleagues or the administration representatives to, to comment. Is there anybody who'd like to speak? Sure. Councilwoman. Um, Harold, thank you very much. And reading your uh, flyer, 
I see there's a drop-off location at 4 Rainbow Terrace in West Orange uh, all week from Look at him, the 23rd to the 27th. Is that correct? Very good. And uh, will be extended till next Sunday. So that is great. And your email uh, is pajama drive 2017 at bees and boy a z zebra a n nancy p r dot com. So thank you very much uh, for bringing this to us, and um, hopefully for all those who are watching on TV, could reach out to you as well. So uh, you're in my neighborhood, so I'll be by with some pajamas for you. Thank you so much for coming. Um, Anthony, I should ask you, does it, do we have a butterfly exhibit up at the, the uh, zoo? It's, yeah. it's seasonal. I'm sorry, I wrote it down. I forgot when you were up here. Thank you for coming back, Mr. Wigley. It's I figure Mr. easier Frick, for everybody to hear. I figure Mr. Brick could uh, <laughs> work with you on that. We actually have um, two butterfly <laughs> exhibits. Uh, one at Turtleback Zoo is seasonal, so once the weather gets warm enough, Actually, one of the pathways, if you walk into the zoo and go to the left as you walk up to the carousel, uh, it's probably about a 50 to 60 foot long exhibit that's uh, tented so that you walk in uh, and, and, have, and you'll see the various habitats. Uh, and then at our environmental center, um, in, um, it's either in June or July, I'm not sure when the dates Roseland. are this year. In Roseland, uh, we have a, a, a three week uh, butterfly tent safari. Uh, where we set up a, a much smaller tent, <clears throat> much smaller tent, but then there's a they uh, arrange a whole bunch of activities around that uh, about education and um, you can actually spend some time in the tent and, and uh, experience oh, cool. the butterflies in that way. Thank you for coming up again. Sorry sure. about that. Thank you and, th and thank you to Mr. Brick for mentioning the butterflies. Uh, no, 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 it's okay. It's never free. Butterflies are free, but speech isn't. Um, if you grow parsley in your garden or you put it out in a pot, it attracts the yellow swallowtail uh, or the black swallowtail. And you can take those chrysalises that you see that are growing on the underside of the parsley up to the um, environmental center in Roseland. We've been doing it for years, and the kids have the ability when they hatch to be able to see them come out and fly away. So it's a, it's a nice way to participate, and at the same time, um, just by having the curly and flat parsley in your, in your pots outside, it's an amazing attraction. We've had 20 and 30 chrysalises on those, um, on those parsley pots. So it's a nice way to augment, and the black swallowtail is not an endangered species like, you know, the um, like the monarch butterfly. But it's an amazing thing for children to be able to see that metamorphosis from a chrysalis into a caterpillar into a butterfly. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you. It's okay. Okay, and and thank you to, to Lori and um, I've got to pay and, and Claire for mentioning all about the school district as well and and your organization. Uh, great, great, uh, great stuff this evening. Keep it short. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Anybody, uh, Councilman yeah, Trill? I'd like to keep it short as well, uh, Council President. Uh, it's just uh, it makes me really proud to sit here and listen to the volunteerism and. The community involvement out there, Lori, Jerry with his uh, public library, Lori with the Girls of the Run, Mike Brick with the milkweeds and protecting our, uh, our habitat, uh, Harold, uh, Ross, and uh, thank you all, uh, Councilman McCartney with the Solar Energy Challenge, Partners in Health, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for make, you know for making this community special. Councilman, okay. thank you, Council President. Mr. Ross, you should be very proud of yourself, and I spoke mm -hmm. to your troop last night, so I guess you took me up on my offer, right? Good going, young man, good going. Your parents and your troop should be very proud of you. You're doing something that is very, very important. It's real community service and civic, so my, my hat is off to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, making it short, too, to Lori, thank you for Girls on the Run and everything else, and also for your tremendous activity within the West Orange Pedestrian Safety Advisory Board and your children always being here. We always love seeing all of you. Uh, to Jerry Sweeney and the friends of the West Orange Public Library, I hope people will come out and support the library and see the great things that are happening there. 
Uh, Claire, thank you for your comments and your support and the, your initiative that we need to take that challenge for, for our individuals in our community who sometimes are forgotten and we can't forget any member of our community. Uh, Mike, thank you for the update on uh, ecology and biology and the butterflies. So thank you very much. I'm sure somebody on, will use this for a high school paper and everything else. So thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Council President. Councilwoman McCartney. Good. It is pretty much a night of thank yous. Um, uh, before we were talking about Sustainable Jersey, with the, when Mike talked about the milkweed, we did get points for an innovative program because I registered the township knowing that we had 400 plants to distribute townwide. We did that last year. And it was considered an innovative program and we did get points in our Sustainable Jersey recertification plan. Now we, like Mike said, we only have, uh, we don't have the plants. And the plants came from Pleasantdale Chateau. Uh, they gave us the plants to distribute. Now we have 30, 40,000 seeds to distribute, which we did do at the uh, Earth Day event on Saturday. Um, we registered, that came about, just to give you a little backstory, that came about with the National Wildlife Federation. Last year began a campaign to repopulate the monarch butterfly because the milkweed, which is the only plant that the milkweed, cat the um, monarch caterpillar eats, has been decimated with pesticides. So the, uh, the campaign was to uh, replant with milkweed seeds. Uh, the National Wildlife, when I registered the township, we were supposed to get a packet and some seeds. They were inundated with requests and they didn't have enough seeds. So that's why we, the Environmental Commission started a campaign to do that locally in town. So what they expected, 30, they had more than 30,000 people respond to this uh, milkweed campaign. So uh, last year we did reach out to all the schools. They have already given us sites to do, but we ran out of time, May then June, um, so now we're back again in May to, to do the planting. So we invite anyone, we have plenty of seeds to, uh, to distribute. Um, I appreciate Lori coming out. I was a running coach for Mountaintop League for many years for eight, nine, and 10-year-old girls. Um, our topography is pretty tough, so <laughs> it sounds like it builds up strength and endurance, not only character um, and ability, so thank you. And good luck with your event. Um, I'm glad you came. I would like you, I would, I'm going to send you information about the health fair. It would be great, health and wellness, to get the word out about Girls on the Run because it sounds like the, um, the Mountaintop League doesn't have a running team anymore, um, but you know this is another uh, another way to facilitate that for uh, for young girls. So, health and wellness at the fair on May 21st. Uh, the same for Jerry Sweeney for the library to get a table there to for all the initiatives that are happening at the library uh, for a healthy community. Uh, thank you. Um, and, and for Claire, Claire, I did hear you get welled up. I know it is very difficult um, you know, to speak about a child uh, with special needs. My daughter is also an adult now. And um, I don't know if you were here in the very beginning of the meeting, what we found out is that there are, we do have programming in town and it does drop off um, when they leave high school. But we have a mayor's program for individuals with special needs. Um, they have camps and a lot of resources. Uh, it might be a good idea to invite Lisa Adams, the coordinator of that, to talk about um, what happens uh, after high school. Yeah. You know, I was so pleased that the um, listening to the director talk about all the life skills programs that they have put in place. Um, you know, just excellent program that have really um, helped the students with special needs. So not just with autism. Um, so that, you know, we are on the cusp of doing that because that's what came out of the fundraiser for PASS on Sunday afternoon at the Artful Bean was what happens next. And it really is important. Lisa, in her professional position, um, is, works with neighbors. If you're registered with the neighbors program, that also provides um, work resource and information um, for adults. Um, and the mayor also ha the mayor's program for individuals with special needs is a an ongoing program. I, I think it started with Mayor Spina. I, Alex Caprio told me I think it's in its 54th year, so uh, it's out there and, and not a lot of people know about it. So we do we do need to do a better uh, better job at educating um, residents about what's available. 
And uh, just a thank you to young man Ross. Uh, what a pleasure. What he's doing, though, I, I think, in my years here, uh, even as a scout leader, um, that's unprecedented. I've seen book drives. I've seen sock drives for Eagle Scout projects. Um, but I never saw a pajama drive. And I think that really is uh, an excellent idea. So we'll help you promote, the, uh, promote that um, through our social media outlets. Congratulations. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ross, yes. Uh, excellent job tonight. Well done, and well done on your project. Uh, we wish you all the best. I want to say thank you to Mr. Puglisi, to Mr. Brick, uh, and to Ms. Kapp for, for coming up here. Uh, very interesting public comment. Just two follow-ups uh, with Mr. Sweeney and the Friends of the West Orange Public Library. Just want you to know that you can join the Friends of the West Orange Public Library and also obtain tickets to the uh, celebration uh, Sunday, which includes a, a multi-course catered dinner, by, uh, from the comfort of your uh, seat at home, you can go online, go to WOPL.org, stands for West Orange Public Library, uh, click on the little box at the top that says Friends, and you will be able to purchase your tickets and also to join other uh, friends if you would like. And hope to see you there on Sunday. Yep. And they're, they're actually, yes, uh, Councilwoman McCartney uh, reminded me of something, which is that if you join the Friends, you get a reduced ticket uh, price uh, to come to the gala. So uh, just something to think about. I just wanted to uh, thank Ms. Silvestri and just to follow up, uh, I did not do a good job at trying to get representatives from the town here tonight. I'm sure that if I had given them uh, better notice than I did, that there would be people here to speak. And, and I think it would be a good idea to, to get them here mm -hmm. uh, in, in the near future to, to discuss this. Uh, so that, I believe, unless does the administration like to say anything? I believe that concludes our public comment period. Uh, Madam Clerk. Consent agenda, approval of minutes of previous meeting, public meeting in executive session April 4, 2017. Consent. Consent. Report of township officers, municipal court monthly report, March 2017. Consent. Consent. Nice to get that again. Bills. Consent. Consent. No bills. <laughs> Are any resolutions being pulled this evening? Well. Mr. Gross, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Please. Gross, does, does the budget need to be pulled and done separately, or? It does not have to be. Okay. Thank you. So nothing to pull? No, sir. Anybody else? I don't think we necessarily need to pull uh, some of the material, but I would like to just ask questions and perhaps get uh, some comment on some of the important legislation that's yeah. coming up tonight. Uh, we have got a couple of pieces uh, of legislation I just want to ask questions about, but I just want to make sure, is there anyone else here uh, on the dais that wants to pull any? No. Okay. No, just, just a few questions. Uh, there's a couple of, of items having to do with uh, affordable housing. And I've already gotten a couple of uh, contacts from people who saw the material up on the agenda and just had some questions about it. So I can't help but notice that uh, Ms. Shirley Bishop, who's our consultant on affordable housing matters, is here. Perhaps it, uh, if we could entice you to just come up and speak just very briefly about the two pieces of legislation. Uh, the, the main interest I got was, be, was whether this had anything to do with the uh, ongoing uh, discussions we're having about the property adjacent to the West Essex Highlands. And I don't believe it does, but people will probably believe you more than they believe me. <laughs> you're, you're the expert. Um, good evening. The quick and dirty answer is they are two totally separate um, items. <clears throat> On your agenda are two resolutions and regarding um, mm -hmm. amending the fair share plan and also adopting an amended spending plan. I'd like to explain why they are on your agenda. As you are aware, Valley Road Residential 
is proposing a 100 unit project of which 55 of the units will be affordable to low and moderate and very low income households and 45 will be available uh, for market rate units. Uh, Joseph Albert, who is the developer of record, is applying to for the 9% mixed income, low income tax credit program, which is vital for funding the particular project. <coughs> of the 55 low and moderate income units, West Orange has agreed to commit and subsidize $3 million to make the project whole using monies from the trust fund, not from the municipal budget, but from the trust fund that are really the result of developer fees and payments in lieu of constructing units. However, there is a bureaucratic process. And in order to commit $3 million, a spending plan has to be amended. However, the only way you can spend trust fund monies is if the project is in your fair share plan. So that is why the West Orange Planning Board amended your adopted fair share plan to include the Valley Road residential project. And the planning board by resolution already amended it. Tonight, as the governing body, you are asked to pass a resolution endorsing the amended fair share plan. That's your action regarding the fair share plan. The court master, Beth McManus, has sent a letter in support of the amended fair share plan. And Joshua Bowers, who represents fair share housing, has also just this evening, hot off the copy machine, <laughs> sent a letter mm -hmm. supporting the uh, amended fair share plan in addition to supporting the spending plan. So the first item on your agenda is the resolution endorsing the amended fair share plan. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I don't know how you want to handle it. Just, just a quick question. Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't get my hand up soon enough. I need to be replaced no as the president, yes. <laughs> uh, perhaps you could just, just briefly mention what happens to this if we do approve it tonight. What other steps need to be taken before it, it uh, becomes completely operational? All right. Actionable. If you, execute, if you pass the resolution amending the, spending, uh, amending the fair share plan, the next step you will take is a resolution amending your previously approved spending plan. And what that, resolu uh, what that resolution says is that you are committing $3 million from your trust account. But I had to amend the whole spending plan and go through a projection of what you expect in trust fund dollars. And John Gross helped tremendously giving me input on projections. And Robin Miller went through the COA tracking and monitoring system and inputted all of the developer fees up to December 31st, 2016. So what you should know is currently you have approximately $3.375 million in your trust account, which means you have sufficient monies, not taxpayer monies, to fund the difference in, in the project. And you are also projecting approximately $500,000 a year, including interest, uh, which brings it up to $4.5 million. So through 2025, if you add what you have in there now, plus your projections, you are projecting approximately $7.93 million. Now this is a projection. We have no idea what will happen. We can always amend a spending plan. But right now, the $3 million, if you in fact adopt the resolution, you have committed $3 million for um, uh, Valley Road. You're probably wondering how all of that money gets distributed. Well, 30% of the money has to go for affordability assistance. That's a requirement. 20% is permitted for administration. And also there is money in there for rehabilitation, um, approximately $2 million projected through 2025. So your rehab program will be moving forward. If you turn to the last page of the spending plan, you'll see the summary chart, which is probably the easiest way of seeing how all of that money um, has been allocated. And I should also say that the court master, Beth McManus, has sent a letter uh, supporting the spending plan that it's consistent with all of the regulations, as well as uh, Josh Bowers from Fair Share Housing Center 
in his letter of this evening, has also um, approved both of them. And the next steps will be, there will be a public notice if you execute the two resolutions. There will be a public notice in the newspaper for anyone to comment. Your township clerk will have copies of all of this available for inspection in the township clerk's office for a period of 45 days. There will be a letter sent to Judge Gardner alerting him to all of this with all of the documents being sent to Judge Gardner asking him to review and approve the amended fair share plan in, in addition to the spending plan. And they will all be sent out uh, once Fair Share Housing Center and the court master have reviewed and approved the public notice, which they've received a week or, a week or so ago, in addition to uh, the letter to Judge Gardner. I, I want to make sure that all of the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, and that the public notice is sufficient, and that the letter to Judge Gardner clearly spells out what is expected from, from the judiciary. But I think we should all be comfortable in knowing that both Fair Share Housing Center and the court master who reports to the court are both supportive of this mm -hmm. because you are providing 55 more units of low and moderate income housing that you had not provided in another plan. And basically, um, that's what's on the agenda for this evening. I'm going to ask if you can, uh, Council President, uh, Mr. Alpert, who's here on behalf of Valley Residential, could you could ask him to come up because he's obviously the person who will be tasked with implementing it once it's approved. I mean, he's been working since uh, the council approved uh, the redevelopment agreement. I would say we're always happy to have Mr. Alpert come up and speak. And while you're up here, you, you, it might be a good idea to, to just do a little uh, slip, uh, sidestep uh, to the other project that you're working on in the Valley and just maybe give us an update on that as well. So again, just so we're clear, um, Mr. Alpert has been designated the interim redeveloper by the town with regard to Selecto Flash. But what we're talking about tonight and what's on the agenda is not Selecto Flash. This is, we'll call it, the West Orange side of Harbor Press. So uh, let's do that first, sure. just so everybody, consistent with Ms. Bishop's Absolutely. Statements. Thank you. Thank you, Council President and Council. Um, we're really excited about what's going on in the Valley. Um, as Ms. Bishop mentioned, uh, we're preparing our application for funding uh, for the West Orange portion of Harvard. We, you call it the uh, former Freegan site. We have our full approvals from your planning board. We extended our planning board approval. Thank you to all the planning board members. Um, it's an extension of what's going on in Orange. Those uh, two and a half acres in Orange, if you drive by, we're up to the second floor framing of the building. We're reconstructing the Art Deco building on site into the parking structure. That's been all cleared out. We're preparing okay. to put the ramp on the outside. Oh. And, and the culvert. And, uh, and, that, and I was okay. going to say, and probably the most exciting and, and, and difficult but rewarding process is we've already restored the municipal boundary between Orange and West Orange, the east branch of Broadway River is flowing as of yesterday. Oh, nice. uh, so, so it's really exciting. Uh, we daylighted a culvert. We took away all that ugly concrete. It's now open. Hasn't um, been vegetated yet. We're going to put the topsoil and the planting in at the appropriate time. Um, but it's really a spectacular site. We've demolished all the buildings in Orange and all the buildings in West Orange. The old uh, Freegan site is down. Um, and like I said, if you know we are successful in, in our plan, which I, I can't tell you, working in a municipality um, that's so um, anxious to comply with COA and use professionals like Ms. Bishop, who have made this process, this was a daunting process. We decided to go in for this funding only a couple of months ago, and working with Mr. Trank and Ms. Bishop to put it together, you could tell. No, the team did a great job because to get that letter of endorsement from Fair Share Housing and the court master is a special item. It means everyone's coming together for something that's very controversial and I, I applaud West Orange. I've been in a lot of municipalities that fight this kicking and screaming and um, I think you've directed it to both the area and the type of housing you want. This is, this is workforce housing combined with market rate housing in a transit oriented development less than a quarter mile from a train station that we hope to have a Midtown Direct. I'm working with Councilman Cirillo to work with NJ Transit. Um, they, Orange has applied for these TAP grants to improve the station. We've talked about this a lot, but now it's becoming reality. Mm -hmm. and, and we're really looking to open the station. And, and to be honest with you, that's when the coffee shops open and the newspaper stands. And, and it's more of an economic boost as much as a housing boost and a social boost for truly integrated housing. 
So it's been just a pleasure working with the team. Just go over the timeline. Sure. My understanding is your application is due by the end of May? Yes, so May 31st we apply. It's only 60 days to find out. So July, I think, 27th or 29th, we find out. We have full working drawings on the West Orange side. We had failed in a previous attempt to finance, so we have our full working drawings. So within a 90-day period, we'd be able to come to your building department and apply for uh, permits. We've already demoed the building, so we'd be able to apply for building permits. And I would say by 1-1 um, one, one of 18, uh, you could see shovels in the ground, uh, if, if not maybe December 1st, to try to get the foundation in the good weather. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's a good plan. It's the exact same plan we used down at the state. We're successful for the orange side, and we're hoping to be successful on the west orange side. So with that, if, if uh, I think the council president, you obviously uh, complied with the redevelopment agreement and you did file report number one that I think every member of the council got last week, but maybe for the public, just give them an update as to where we're at on select Jumping onto select the flesh. So we've been working before, before, before we sorry, do that, if we, if we could, does the council have any questions about uh, Mr. Albert on the current project? Just a couple quick questions. You're still sure. on track. You're still expecting to, if everything goes well, for you to finish that building by the end of next year, correct? The orange side? Orange. No, on, on the west orange west side. West orange. Uh, we'll be, like to be funded July 31st, uh, be in for permits by year end, one, one of 19 finished and occupied. Okay. One, one of 19, yeah. So 55 of the units will be affordable housing, so that means that they will be uh, rent, I don't know if restricted is the word to, to use, uh, but- the income and the rents are restricted, but they're restricted at levels where you earn between thirty-five and $60,000 for a family, and the rents are between 900 and 1100 for the uh, restricted rents, then the market rate rents are about 10 to 15 percent higher. Okay. And those are for the other 45 units? The other 45. Okay. Uh, Councilman Greeno. Thank you, Council President. Mr. Albert, congratulations. Thank uh, you. And thank you for your continued support. I just have two questions for you, sir. If And one's an if then. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, one, and it's the same question I asked Mr. Sayers. Do you have any marketing materials yet? How you're going to market your uh, development? In orange or West Orange? In orange, and then I'm sure you'll swing it, you know. Um, orange, we, uh, we're going to start our marketing program in September, approximately three months prior to occupancy, and I will bring them to City Hall and, and through the, the clerk, um, but we don't have them available yet. Okay. My next question is, it's an if then, and I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. If, for example, New Jersey Transit holds up the factor of the opening of the station and making it a midtown direct station. How were you prepared to address that issue? Is the well, great and part. what impact? Absolutely no impact to the Valley Road residential, which is the West Orange portion of Harvard. Zero impact. Okay. Um, we are being conservative with our market rents at existing levels. It's, it would only be a plus. So zero impact on, on, on the timing, the affordability, the feasibility, everything. No, I could, and, it's a good, and thank you for your response. It's just a good question I'm saying is because sometimes people don't factor in those things. Yep. And I appreciate the fact that you have factored in and you've made the project that if Murphy's, you know, and I hope it doesn't happen, yep. but you're prepared to move forward and the project won't be negatively it, impacted. It will go as fast as, as now we're uh, full throttle in Orange. West Orange will not be impacted. Um, but, but just to jump, uh, to tag along with that, it's kind of a chicken or the egg because, yeah. and again, I know Mr. Alpert and others have had these inquiries. So New Jersey Transit is obviously, their job is, if they can get through the tunnel, is to, <laughs> is to encourage ridership and whatnot. The question is you need the neighborhood. So he's going to create with the town the neighborhood. So it's really a question of when, not if they will open that station. Absolutely. And of course, what Chief Abbott, along with New Jersey Transit, and I hope the Orange Police Bar, I'm sure will, you know, we have a police substation already west of the block on Via Valley, and that whole corridor, we believe, could hopefully, you know, the more secure it is, the better for yeah. everyone, and that's certainly the number one commitment of the administration. So I think that, and again, Mr. Albert, if you could comment, because I know you've met with some of the New Jersey Transit, I know yeah. uh, Councilman Cirillo's out, uh, outreaching also. They want to open, it's just a question of, they don't want to open for five people, they, they want to open. It's only one more no, no. ridership. Right, and right. Um, they equate units to ridership, these are right. family units, um, but, but it's mostly people taking the train into the city. There are multiple trains from the Orange Station. If one in the morning and one at night got switched to Highland Station, which it has full capacity to do, they've said, the minute these units are ready, 
they would consider opening that, the mid that was correct? yeah that was my question not saying opening the station I know that because yeah. they know they have grants to open and refurbish that say I was saying is if they decided not to increase the number of midtown direct trains from that that won't well, there's yep. none now yeah. No, no, I know. I know there's none now. No, I'm saying it's yeah. a local ghost. So it's the whole. Yeah. 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 You know, we'll it's, it. none of our <laughs> financing is contingent on gaining. Yeah. No, and it's not the financing, yeah. or, or none of our intents are. We we are full blast whether it happens or not. Right. But like Mr. Trang said, it's going to happen now. So that's the exciting part. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Council President. Well, just to the point that my colleague made, that has been part of the planning process when you were before. You know, we always have the eyes on our eyes on the prize, and that's what we heard back in 2012 was that you know you build it first, and then we we will consider the renovation. It wasn't the other way around because that definitely would help with the marketing as a marketing tool. But so it's never a condition of the application. It was just. And that's, on the price. I mean, the flip mm -hmm. side is, you're right, mm -hmm. I probably would have been further along if I would have had that first. It was always the chicken and the egg. Yeah. They said, nope, you got to do it first. So we did. We figured out a way of financing it. So now we've done the hard part. Now they just got to follow on and print the tickets for the train. So. Mm -hmm. And Thank you've you. seen the renderings. We had them at earlier mm -hmm. meetings, you know, and the whole way is kind of the facade and the four-story over parking. So it nice. uh, nice. looks like a... Yeah, Excellent. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you so for your support. Please, please stay here. Yes, please, please, please stay up here, <laughs> Mr. Stafford. So, Mr. President, you wanted to hear about. Yes, I, I, but it looked like uh, Councilman Cirillo had a question. Yeah, uh, I one last question, uh, Joe. Uh, what, what's the probability of the 9% being funded? Well, there are three different cycles within the whole 9% round there's family, senior, and mixed income reserve. Uh, family, senior, and supportive housing, and then there's a mixed income reserve. It's highly competitive. However, in this mixed income reserve, every project over the last three years that has applied has gotten funded. Don't know, you know, we developers are very close mouth to what's going in. Uh, we would compete against any other non-targeted urban municipality, so we're not competing against Newark or Jersey City. We're competing against other suburban uh, municipalities, and we'll just have to see how many people compete. Uh, we have a very competitive tiebreaker, um, and like I said, we have probably more municipal support than almost any town that I know of in the state, um, so I feel very comfortable. Uh, the minute they publish the list, which will, even though it's a short time frame to hear from May 31st to July uh, 29th, we'll know even sooner how many jobs, if any, we're competing against, and I'll be able to share that with the council. And if you give us that information, is there anything the town can do to... Absolutely nothing, support? unfortunately. It's a, it's, 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 a, it's a numbers game, it's points and tiebreakers, and um, you, you've done everything you can if these happen to pass tonight. You've put the project in a fantastic position to win. Okay, I think now we're ready for your sidestep. Sure. <laughs> So you are also the interim, you're the designated interim redeveloper for the Central Avenue redevelopment project. And as part of that, recently the council approved you, council majority approved you uh, in a transaction that uh, for all intents and purposes, what we're talking about tonight, you were going to sort of oversee the, the, uh, the deconstruction or the demolition of the Selective Flash building. And uh, as part of that agreement, you have uh, a responsibility to make monthly uh, reports to the council and the township uh, about the progress there. And just wanted to sort of open, open that up because you've, you've had a couple of, I don't know how to characterize them, but you do have some news and I just wanted you to just sort of talk to uh, the township and, and the, the council up here about what Absolutely. you found. I've um, been working um, with the township um, designated LSRP, which is your licensed uh, site remediation professional, uh, New World Matrix, on the uh, how we could demolish the selective flash yet stay in compliance with the environmental laws. So there is a, a, a law that says for any concrete that wants to be demolished, you can either use it on site or take it off site. Our preference would be to crush it and uh, use it on site. To do that, it must be tested. Um, and then analyzed for that purpose, and then actually um, a BUD, uh, beneficial use determination is made with DEP, that still stays with DEP, not the LSRP, they approve that you can crush it and use it on site, and that's the most beneficial for the township right now. Uh, we've done all the testing, um, uh, and it was a mixed bag. 
uh, from a, um, in, uh, a standpoint of how much could potentially be used on site, it was very good results. We had two hits in very small areas that we would uh, demolish first, take off the site, uh, and then hopefully crush and reuse. The second half was something that we're still investigating. They did all their analysis and they have to finalize one aspect of what the compounds are in the concrete. If they're already existing in the soil, they could then be reused on site. It really dovetails with your HDSRF grant that you previously approved and got funded for $77,000 yeah, uh, to do investigative work. So part of the investigative work is to look now in your soil on that site, and I say your soil because it is municipally owned land, to see if those con uh, contaminants in the soil match the concrete. That hasn't been uh, finalized yet. When that's finalized, we can submit the BUD application to DEP. Um, we have a contact at DEP who sits on the BDA that the township uh, hosts uh, every couple months um, to get that approved to use. So we feel that process after we analyze the soil, which I think is this Thursday, they're, they're doing the borings. Um, so I would think in the next two to four weeks, we'd have an idea of the submission of the BUD application to DEP for approval. And this, yeah, I, no, I hope I, that's... We've had various conference calls with Matrix and uh, Mr. Albert's been involved. So we're on track and uh, Mr. Finley from the DEP is gonna help facilitate that process. The, the, the soil samples, did not exist and we just got some funding so we can afford them. So again, it's all about getting the paperwork in, getting the DEP to approve it. Hopefully there, in a strange sense, you want there to be some of these trace components in the soil. Right. And then that allows you to leave some of these two hot spots on site. Right. So, so it's, you know, again, the mayor adamantly wants this building down before the summer. Uh, it's going to be, uh, it's, that's aggressive, but that's the, the marching orders, and uh, we're extremely hopeful that that can still occur. Yeah, and we've privately allocated the funds um, to apply them the minute we get approval from DEP of that BUD to apply for the demo permits and take it down immediately. And no funding consequences. We have that covered. Right, and, and we have to get the disconnect, so that's the only yes. jump between when we have a DEP sign off, then we have to get the disconnects. Uh, Mr. Sayers in the past has helped us with his contacts to get uh, the different uh, the utilities basically uh, have to turn everything off so it's safe to dismantle that structure. So to try to simplify, there seems to me to be two issues. One is is you found some contamination at two hot spots in the building. You have to do further testing to figure out what you're going to do with that, or have you already determined that you need to take those those two? The, small those two are coming out, and they're, they're small coming. and almost inconsequential. They're okay. part of the demolition. The okay. bigger issue is in the base of the concrete. There's found a couple of contaminants that we're verifying that are also uh, in the dirt. If if that's a match and they're in the dirt. Um, we will submit the BUD application. Actually, went to someone already from DEP for sort of a pre-read on it. He said, yes, if you find those same, it's a like-to-like -like, uh, examination. So if it's like in the building, same as the soil, you can put the building crushed materials in the soil. That's the comparison of doing. So really, it's just one issue. Okay. Are there like-to-like -like contaminants? And, and just for some uh, context, that's somewhat similar to what happened on the Freegans building where you're looking to... Uh, start construction, you did find some contaminants, but they were at, at low enough levels that it didn't exceed uh, the, the, uh, the levels where there was some concern, and they were all reflected within the uh, fill that was in, exactly. in the land already. We tested already. the okay. concrete in the exact same fashion. There are DEP regulations on how frequently you have to test. They, were, they, they passed the, we did follow with the same exact process of BUD beneficial use determination with DEP. They approved it, and that's why Freegans we were able to crush, and we're going to use it as our grading. That's the hope at Select a Flesh. And, in, and in, much, in many of the cases, what you do is you seal the, the soil anyway right. with asphalt. Or so, so that's the whole another thing. We, we've gotten the, the municipality's gotten the grant to do the investigation. You're going to be doing um, uh, some soil investigation, water investigation. There is a chance that the only remedial action you have to do as part of the redevelopment of the site is cap it. And that means just putting a, a concrete or, or asphalt cap above it, and that would be the end of your problem. 
but that's too early because I think that's the phase two of what New World Matrix will present to your council for approval after they do phase one, which is invest investigative. Okay. And that's why, as you know, the interim redevelopment agreement goes about two years or so, and in that time frame, we hope to have all that buttoned down, get a remedial action work plan that's needed, and then, uh, you know, presumably, uh, Valley Residential will make a proposal for doing, and by that time, hopefully, 1119 has occurred. We've got the West Orange. Everything is renting. There's good market, and obviously, that just makes it all, you know, yeah. it creates the, you know, the neighborhood that everybody wants. Absolutely. Councilman Srula, did you have something to say? I may have stepped over you because I was question, trying to clarify. That was a question. <laughs> I wanted to ask questions about the 2013 report. And then you did, you summarized everything. I, I do want to say that his, his knowledge of the DEP is mm -hmm. impressive. Yes, <laughs> yes, you know, very impressive. Yeah, very impressive. You would make a great bureaucrat. <laughs> we've, been, we've been doing it for a while. I prefer to lose that knowledge at some point in my future, but. You've been doing this for over a decade. <laughs> I appreciate the transparency, too. Thank you for No problem. I, I, I find if the municipality knows the hurdles, it, it helps yeah. a developer. Absolutely. Thank you. Councilman, did you have no, something? No, I just want to thank both okay. Shirley and, and, and Joe. I, I mean, they're, they really explain in great detail. And just from talking to folks who see the, um, see the council meetings on television, the folks that came to the last meeting that you were at up at West Essex Highlands, it really helps for, you know, for the audience to realize what's happening here step by step. And both of you do a great job. And, it, and I'll admit it too, it, it helps me a great deal as well to, to comment. Yeah, the COA regulations are complex. not easy. No. Yeah. But thank you both. Thank you. Council yes, Councilwoman. Um, so the acronym BDA came up just a little while ago, and that's for Brownfields, um, for everyone to know. But just this morning, I did get a, an email from the Center for a Creative Land, and this, when we had our last BDA meeting, we were looking at grant opportunities, and one came out just today. Um, so we can have another meeting, and I'll share that with everyone uh, to look Thank to look at this hmm? for Brownfields. So do we need uh, Mr. Albert or Ms. Bishop any, any more? Okay. We'll be okay. right here. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ms. Ms. Bishop, I appreciate one mm -hmm. of the points I was trying to make was so that everybody knows is that we, are, we, meaning the township, is spending a ton of money to try to provide affordable housing. It's going to be the $3 million for uh, mm -hmm. the Valley Project, and it's also going to be almost uh, $2.05 million to rehabilitate existing buildings, um, uh, which is... It's just a lot of money. It's just a lot of money. So, uh, okay. And uh, any anything else? Because I, I had a couple other issues on the, related to the budget before we get to the consent. Well, what we're going to do is, since no one pulled it, we're going to have oh, a single vote on the entire consent agenda. So, so we're just going to move on to a couple other issues, Thank and then you. hopefully very quickly, and then you can go home. Actually, you can go home now, but yeah. <laughs> is that nice yeah, thank thing you? you. <laughs> well, when, uh, when we were talking about the administrative uh, portion of the affordable housing uh, funding spending, it's Ms. Bishop is getting a, a good chunk of that. So if you don't have to stay around, you will save money. Well earned. Um, mm -hmm. the, the other issue is just have about the budget. We're going to be introducing the uh, 2017 budget tonight. And there's some, uh, uh, there's, I guess, three different resolutions having to do with that. And I was just wondering, Mr. Gross, if you could just briefly uh, tell us the purpose of the three, uh, three resolutions. And on the uh, resolution 98-17 uh, to introduce the budget, maybe you could just talk a, also a little bit about what, what goes on from here, uh, starting with, I don't know, is the, is the budget up on the web, uh, town website yet? Uh, no, it'll be up okay. after, after this afternoon. Okay. Okay. So please take it away. Uh, okay. Uh, there's a resolution uh, on this evening to introduce the 2017 budget. Uh, the budget process uh, is, is that the, 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 the council is required to introduce the budget, uh, and then after a period of time, uh, have a, a budget hearing, which is anticipated to be a, a month a month or so from now, um, and then. Uh, after the after that hearing, it can adopt or amend and adopt or amend and 
then have a, a, a hearing on the, um, the amendment at a, at a later date and then adopt. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, the, the budget process. It usually takes at least a month, you know, it can take six weeks to two months of time. Um, is, depending on what we have, you know, in years past, we, it was, it was, it was, there was a delaying process because the state really wasn't ready to uh, uh, get things going. This year we're in self-review, so we won't have an issue with the state uh, having to take time to review it. So, or at least they do, they do a minimal review. They don't necessarily they don't do the full review. Um, so that's Mr. Mr. Gross, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I apologize. Uh, but before we move on to the other piece of legislation, I was I was worried that that's where you were going. Maybe you could just briefly describe the budget. We're increasing the spending a little bit. We're uh, mm -hmm. looking to uh, have the two percent tax levy increase. I don't know if there's anything else major. Yeah, I mean, in, I think the have, from the public's perspective, what they're mostly concerned about is the is the tax impact, and the tax impact will be a two percent increase on the amount to be raised by taxation. Um, Similar as that has been. In, in, in Past few years, um, the, the 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 spending is actually at cap, um, so we're you know we're, we're we're this is the budget as as it stands. Uh, if you know, I don't anticipate any any significant um, amendments moving forward, so I just don't think there should be any surprises. Um, there's been one update I think that we that we had at during the statutory budget hearing that m may update. Uh, something that was previously said here at a council meeting, which had to do with the projections on the size of the tax base. We were talking about uh, earlier that there was going to be what we thought is more significant negative impacts on the tax base this year. And at the at the budget hearing, it came up that it didn't look nearly as bad as it as it had. I just wanted to maybe to throw that out. Because yeah, that, I mean, because the, that has an impact on what the, our tax increase the is going to be. The, the uh, amount of the um, uh, assessed valuation uh, is down is down for this year. But as, as you said, it's not down as much as we had anticipated. Um, the, the assessor was able uh, to just just from just before the the budget meeting uh, was able to do an update. Um, so we're we're not anticipating any, ch any further change uh, at this point in time. Um, so we're, we're uh, it, it will have an impact. It's you know probably you know a quarter to a half a percent uh, different on the tax rate. Doesn't impact the amount to be raised by taxes, but do, does have an impact on the tax rate. Yes. Yeah, so the the projection is a decline of maybe eight million in in our overall tax base, which is just a very small yeah. uh, decline. And I think it's the best performance we've had for in probably seven or eight years. Well, and especially considering the that we've decline. taken a huge hit. In commercials this year, mm -hmm. and, and by design, to try to get them past us, so that we don't anticipate that hit repeating uh, in the in the you know the next you know, three to five years. So, um, we, we, what that what this really means is probably values are on the incline, and you know we, we're we've turned that corner, and uh, we will in the future be looking at increases. My belief in in the assessed valuation. Ooh, overall. That would be a nice turn. Yeah, yeah. upswing mm -hmm. would be nice. So yeah, they we're talking a quarter to a half percent down so based on that. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions before we move on to the other two pieces of legislation? Well, can you equate it to the taxpayer per household in dollars and cents? Sure. Yeah, it's, actually, it's actually in the budget that you're going to put up uh, mm -hmm. the introduced budget in the next mm -hmm. day or two. So, so if you really want to see the budget, folks, it should be up on the township website probably by the end of, of tomorrow. Uh, and that and that gives a lot uh, more information than the than the mayor's original in, uh, budget proposed budget from yeah. several weeks ago. Yeah, I, got, I have a figure. Excuse me. I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize. I can come back to that. I can answer another question while you're sure. You want to just move on to the other two pieces of legislation? I think they're just uh, just paperwork. Yeah, I need a chance to this. vote, but. I just 64 or something. Yeah, maybe off, but I thought it was $64. Oh, that sounds about right. I just didn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know yeah. the change. That's from, that's from the budget here. Mm -hmm. um, the, other two, the other two pieces um, are one is a, a recalculation of the tax collection rate, and that's pretty much a housekeeping issue. I don't really see that impacting this year's budget, but it, it is something that uh, we'd like to do, and it's just again as, as a housekeeping matter, 
um, it, by doing the recalculation, um, it, it, it frees up uh, money, from, in essence, from surplus uh, in order to uh, be applied to keep that tax rate down. Like I said, I don't, I don't really anticipate using that this year. Um, and the, the third one is, let me see, is the, what's about the ordinance? The ordinance to oh, I guess we'll we'll get to the ordinance later. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, any other questions? No. I just had one other resolution I wanted to ask about, and that's uh, resolution 100-17. It's authorizing the township to reject proposals received in response to its request for proposals for the contract for emergency transportation third-party billing. Just a quick question about why we're why we're doing that. Uh, I I think it was something that we I've never heard of us doing before. We we didn't actually do one piece of the puzzle before we started considering the bids and just trying to find out if that was just a one-time thing or whether you've had whether the administration is doing anything to change the process um, well we're, 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 we're going to you know tweak the process so that this that we don't expect this to repeat again um, having said that um, but unfortunately it, it did occur and so we have to start over I, I don't I don't think it'll be long before we're back because I, I suspect bids will be resubmitted Maybe, who knows, maybe they'll even be a little better since it's all public record and everybody knows what everybody Exactly, knows, so. exactly, okay. But that wasn't our objective. Okay. Is there any other discussion of the consent agenda? That was a good point. Madam Clerk? Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda first? So moved. moved. Second. <coughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The consent agenda is implemented. Wonderful. We'll move on to uh, ordinances on second and final reading. The the I do have oh. I do that. I have the answer for the the Thank average you. taxes on a on an assessed home whose value didn't change is sixty five dollars. Okay. That's the increase. Thank 65. you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, ordinances on second and final reading. Twenty five oh seven seventeen. Ban ordinance providing various capital improvements in and by the Township of West Orange in the County of Excess, New Jersey, appropriating eight million nine hundred and ninety five thousand five hundred and forty six, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of eight million five hundred and sixty thousand bonds or notes of the Township to finance part of the cost thereof. Is there a motion to introduce ordinance 250717 so on moved. second and final reading? Second. Councilwoman Casalino? Yes. Councilman Cirillo? Yes. Councilman Garino? Yes. Councilwoman McCartney? Yes. Council President Krakowia? Yes. So at this point, we can either discuss the ordinance and then move to a public hearing, which is required for all ordinances on second reading, or we can have the public hearing and then have the discussion. I, I, I would suggest you have the hearing and then your discussion becomes part of that hearing. Okay. Uh, at this time, is there anyone who wishes to speak at the public hearing? If so, please raise your hand and be recognized by the chair. Seeing no hands, I will close the public hearing and uh, open the discussion to uh, my colleagues. Um, Councilwoman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gross, for sending the attachment with a little better detail on the list. I assume when you get to the point, I know you're meeting in, um, or you're having meetings with, um, the fire chief in regards to the details on their end. But the, li the, uh, the library, their um, improvements, you have their list, so that would be incorporated. So once you get to that point where you're getting ready to go, then I assume you're gonna bring another resolution will, to us. We'll, we would come back to make awards. Okay. There's so a resolution so, for each award. Yeah, yeah if, if there's an award that, you know, obviously um, most of these projects are above the bid, bid threshold, so we would be back to you for any of those. Anything that's under the bid threshold, we would not be back to you. I appreciate the committee and the time and having the input from our firemen we, on the, yeah, we've already had on the improvement side. Great collaboration. Thank you. 
we already had our first meeting, so. Okay. Council Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, Mr. Gross, thank you. Um, because the detail you took into this, particularly with the fire and police department, shows the need to replace our aging equipment for the benefit of our firefighters, their safety, and also the response time and the reliability of the township residents. So the way it, it, you laid it out and the meetings and the schedules and the details, you know, support this uh, ordinance in, in, in full. And uh, thank you and thank you for the members of the committee that put it all together. And uh, so it was very good. Thank you, Council President. Any, anyone else? I just had a few questions on some of the projects. It's, I agree, it's very helpful to have more detail like this. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, on the pool project, you, you're projecting to spend, uh, I'm sorry, if you know the number. 275. I'd like to get it, in, like to get it at 275. That's, that's okay, 275. Goal. Could you t talk a little bit about the pool project? There's a lot of people who use the pool and would be interested in this. First of all, is the project expected to take place before the pool opens this year or no. would this be yeah. after? Okay. Our, our, our plan, our plan uh, we, uh, matter of fact, we just approved uh, um, architect and a uh, uh, and an engineering firm to, to start doing some preliminary work on coming up with a concept plan and you know ba basically to get get us towards a cost estimate um, but the anticipation is to, to get all the all of the work done prior all of the software done prior to September 1 and when the pool closes to be in a position to begin construction um, the, the project is basically to uh, increase increase our uh, um, availability or accessibility uh, to make it easier for uh, people with handicap access to have access to the pool. We currently do have that, uh, but it's it, it's not optimum. So uh, one of the things we're looking to do is to um, uh, basically move the entrance way a little bit, um, Good. put put it, put up a, a uh, some type of a structure. Uh, that will basically the house people to to you know check people into the pool as opposed to coming down through the, through the building downstairs and then also renovations to the the um, um, parking area uh, and, the, and the, the lot that we acquired next to it um, for um, to again to make accessibility better easily easier for them we also we also may get some grant money for this um, oh, nice. but, but you know that would be great and you but right we we don't want to wait on that because otherwise we'll, we'll miss the target of of uh getting getting being ready to go for uh, september 1 so because we figure we want to get it done then so it is there's no question about it being done for the next season if we start in the you start in the spring you just never know because may comes awfully fast mm -hmm. Yes, well, thank you, thank you, Council President. Mr. Gross, how many additional parking spaces? This one. I, I don't know the answer to that right now. I mean, we, we will know that by by the time we come back for an award. Um, you know, that's what one of the preliminary things that the the arc engineering firm will, will be doing. Okay. The other thing is, you mentioned, of course, you know, applying for ADA, you know, uh, monies. If we do get ADA money, can it be applied to, for repayment of this ordinance bond? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So is there, are you in the process of making application? I already have made the application to CD, CDBG. Good. So you Thank mentioned you. that we acquired property? Acquired a lot? Where There's a lot that, that, that I don't the know. House, there was a house there next was, to the pool. Yeah. House next we to the pool. We bought that a couple of years ago. Right. Oh. So that's going to be part of the parking lot. So I've knocked down the house and... I think the house is down. Right? Yeah, oh, oh, is it? House, house oh, down. Wow. I, it was, I think it's down. I thought they took it down. Sure. Well, the back maybe because there's a back end. There was like a, a converted garage that was an yeah. apartment for or storage. something back there. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't it was much for of a storage. House. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't mm -hmm. much of a house. I mean, it was a structure. Mm -hmm. I can't. But yeah. I, I don't. I can't tell you for sure it was a house, but it was, it was some kind of a structure. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we, we not, there, there's there's another structure there that's for sale, but we don't think we need that. Okay, and when you say moving the entranceway, are you going to be moving it? I guess, sort of up the slope. Because I know where people come in down near the building, they then have to walk up a, right, a right. fairly substantial Basically grade for where people. Basically, we, have... we now have the gates, which are our utility entrance, turning that into the building. Okay. okay. And would our senior citizens be able to enter that way also? Because well, I know that's, that's been yeah. that would be yeah. much easier for them yeah. than coming up yeah. that yes. grade. Yeah, yeah. that'll be all, it'll be the entry for everyone. Oh, won't better be yet. Won't be oh, just. Okay. Yeah, it'll be the entry. For oh, good idea. Very good. Thank you. 
So you also talk about the uh, uh, some of the road projects people are always interested in. You've got uh, Upper Mellon Avenue and Cleveland Terrace to Hoover Avenue, Curtis Avenue, Garfield Avenue improvements, Lower Winding Way, uh, and then you've got annual street resurfacing program, almost $4 million. Those two don't seem to be related, are they? No, no, there's, okay. a, there's a separate list that the engineer is working on now okay. as far as to, to fill that in. Okay, it's, so do we have any, any uh, streets now for that $4 million? Or I is he I just working have, on I don't, okay. have, I don't have that for you tonight again. Okay. He's, he's working on that list, and we'll be sitting with the mayor and going over that and um, come back to you. Okay. Is it the same thing with the uh, uh, community development block grant uh, improvements? There's a reference there uh, to. Uh, yeah. Well, that's part of. Oh, yeah, that's the, part of it. Okay. The, it, that would be on top of these numbers. Okay. Not to repay. Is, uh, uh, okay. There's a there's a couple of um, there's a couple of uh, uh, underground storage tank facilities on on town property. Uh, that we're planning to spend three hundred thousand dollars on. One is the uh, half of it at the uh, fire station four, yeah. and then the other one it just says ongoing UST site remediation for one hundred fifty thousand. Is that the public works? That's part of it. Property, okay. but it's it's multiple locations. Okay. I notice we want to get those tanks out of the ground. That that's for sure. I believe that's the remaining ones we have. So. Okay. We we're um, we're proposing to get uh, to buy one, two, three, four, five, five uh, either pickup or dump trucks uh, with plows yes. on them. And I know we've been periodically coming to the council and asking about expanding our outsourcing program to bring in more vendors to handle the snow plowing. And yet now we're coming in, and it looks like we're sort of rededicating ourselves to. Doing it, our, doing it you know, well, with town employees and with well, town equipment. That's, we're, not, we're, that's, we're, not, that's not correct. No, no, we're, we, we we're replacing old vehicles that we're using now that are too old, so we need to replace those vehicles. We have not. If you, if you look back over the past few years, there's been very few uh, public works uh, vehicles and equipment that we've requested, uh, and we're to a point mm -hmm. now where it's critical that we. Need yeah, I, I think the police would agree with you on the police. Yeah. We're, we're also talking about buying or leasing. How many police? Buying 10. 10. Yeah. 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 Uh, That's great. Just a quick question. There, there's um, money in here for, I think, whether we've previously discussed, I think half a million dollars for improvements uh, for the fire department, for various fire department buildings. Mm -hmm. You have spoken previously about there's been this ongoing analysis uh, and survey of, of everything that's needed. And I, th I thought perhaps we had asked to see that once it's completed. Yeah, that's why I mentioned earlier when I first oh, started did? my comments, okay. it's not uh, finalized yet. They're, oh, having, not, okay. they're yeah. having meetings, the, committee the meetings. List, yeah, we, we, have, we have a list for, as far as these improvements, but the, the, the study that we yeah. did get back, I mean, we're, I think we mentioned to you is $2.8 million worth. Oh, of, I apologize, yes, of, we didn't get that yet. Uh, worth of uh, uh, improvements that are required. So we're, we're vetting that now between what the wants and the needs of the musters, um, and, and, and where the best way, best place to Who spend the, five, the first five hundred thousand um, dollars. Sorry, we didn't mean to wake we, you up. Which most likely will be buttoning up. <laughs> most, in most cases, we button up outside of buildings to make sure whatever improvements we do in the future uh, will, will not get damaged from rain and outside sources. But. Uh, that's, and that was that was kind of the consensus at our meeting. Although we're looking to see whether there's, you know, number one, what, how much of that we need from this five hundred thousand, what other project we might be able to get done. So. And we're also spending six or seven hundred thousand dollars to do major upgrades in our sewers. Yes. Okay. Sewers are one of those things you sort of take for granted until they stop working. So that's, <laughs> people would be interested. You can. Please, right. Councilman. Question. So, uh, any of these categories, if no, if the projects come in lower than what you estimated, can you utilize the funds for the other projects? So you can yeah, redirect yeah, the money at any time. We have the, 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 this, the ordinance gives us the flexibility um, to, you know, one comes high, one comes low, depending on the category. Um, you know, to, to move those move those monies around. And if you could just note of, you know, just let that reflect when you when you 
re, re, uh, if you redirect that those funds to a different project. I'm sorry. Just, if you redirect those funds to a different project, if you would just let us know down the road. Uh, generally, that, that come, basically anything like that that happens, you'll see that in the bills list. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if you could just, you know, especially with the firehouses, if we're going to do additional improvements, it would be nice to know that certain improvements are getting yeah, done. Yeah, okay, um, certainly the firehouses is, uh, in particular, I'll be okay. happy to try to share that with you. Right. Um, that would be a major decision. Thank you. And, and, and I don't really see us going over the 500000 this year, but if we do, I'll let you know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Madam Clerk? Is there a motion to adopt Ordinance 2507-17 on second and final reading? First? So moved. Second. Councilwoman Casalino? Yes. Councilman Cirillo? Yes. Councilman Garino? Yes. Councilwoman McCartney? Yes. Council President Krakowiak? Yes. The, uh, the motion carries. Uh, moving on to ordinances on first reading. Madam Clerk, I think I stepped on you, so, uh, <laughs> so please, I apologize. Uh, 250817, calendar year 2017, ordinance to exceed the, mass, uh, the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank. Is, I'm sorry, I'm a little <laughs> nope. motion to <laughs> Just ask for the motion. Is there a motion to introduce ordinance 20? 50817 on first reading. First. So, so moved. Second. Okay. Um, Councilwoman Casalino? Yes. Councilman Cirillo? Yes. Councilman Garino? Yes. Councilwoman McCartney? Yes. Council President Krakowiak? Yes. Ordinance uh, passes on first reading. Is there any discussion? No. This was the, oh, this was the, go ahead. No, okay. I was reminding you. <laughs> uh, this was the other piece of the legislation related to the budget. I just wanted uh, just a quick explanation of this why we're is, doing this it. This is usually um, what, what I would c c categorize as uh, housekeeping. However, this year, as I mentioned, we are at cap, and we were, this ordinance is required uh, for uh, for the adoption of the budget that's introduced this evening. Um, this this is the process by which the state gives us the the ability to create a, a cap bank um, and uh, so that upon it upon its upon its adoption uh, this will give us the room that we need in order to adopt this year's budget uh, reason the next question will be what's the reason behind that change this year or and it's not just this year but it's it's come up over the past few years uh, that our increase that we've had in health benefit cost two years ago um, mm -hmm. basically would put us in motion to eat up our our, um, our cap bank. So um, even and, and fortunate we had a good experience last year and this year we didn't have a big increase. Um, so next year I'm making plans for uh, how to absorb any increase in health benefits next year within the cap bank that we will have or we, we will have to generate next year and no not having to come back from the any any bank come coming forward from previous years so. but just to just to clarify the 2017 budget is not proposing to exceed cap absolutely but, no, but you're no. planning you're you're planning ahead in case you need to next year no i, I don't ever anticipate going over cap because okay. that requires a, a that would require going to the public with a, <laughs> with a, a referendum. So that, that's what, what I'm saying is, is that we're going to, I mean, I'm planning now on how we're going to fund increases or deal with increases in, in 18 um, with a limited cap uh, bank. So. Anything else, colleagues? <laughs> Madam Clerk, next ordinance on first reading, please. Is there a motion to introduce ordinance number 250917? An ordinance creating a reclassification and salary schedule of certain township of West Orange employees, setting forth their titles, classification and salary ranges, and adopting a salary guide and establishing employee status as a township employee and under the guidelines of the New Jersey Department of Personnel. Is there a motion um, to Introduce um, ordinance number 250917 on first reading. First, so moved. So moved. second. second. Oh, sorry. 
Councilwoman Casalino? Yes. Councilman Cirillo? Yes. Councilman Garino? Yes. Councilwoman McCartney? Yes. Council President Krakowiak? Yes. The motion is carried. Mr. Gross, do you want to give us your super speedy 20 second explanation of this? Uh, yeah, this is a, 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 a introduction of a salary ordinance uh, which sets the salaries for all, all township employees. Uh, the changes within this are primarily um, things that we have discovered through, through our implementation of Kronos uh, where um, we have uh, titles that were reversed or titles that just that, that were never included or somewhere along the line. Um, we also have uh, a new positions in there that we, we talked about in term, at, at the budget meeting um, in reference to bringing on new code enforcement officers that allows us to um, hire uh, directly and not, not, not off of a, of a civil service list. New code enforcement officers. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. That's wonderful. Well, we had a retirement. And but not uh, a new replacement. Replacement. Oh. Not, yeah, not don't additional. Don't get not so additional. excited. It's just a new <laughs> title. Yeah. Not additional. Like a great title. Wow. Well, you had a hot flash. Oh. Not additional. No. no. Yeah. Um, so it's it, you know pretty much housekeeping. Just to get okay. things that come up with, that mm -hmm. we learn. As one of the things with the Chronos system is that we, it's so, in, uh, in so high level of detail that uh, we, you know we've uncovered things that you know just happened over the years. Are you still chief financial officer? Last <laughs> time I checked. Okay, good. Last time I checked. Great. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, next uh, agenda item is uh, pending matters, new matters, council discussion. Does council have anything? Because Mr. Sears is about to leave the building. We had 9:15. We want out of I'm sorry. Is there Council President? I did. I think um, I would like to have an update on the recycling center. Yeah. I know that there has been an awful lot. An update on the recycling center. On uh, well, we get the monthly reports, but. Why don't you tell them about well, the new um, application? Well, no, I saw plan that, but right, and, right, and I saw that, and I guess those are the kind of questions, like why wasn't that up there how many years ago? It was you know. made up there. It was Okay, so I'm sure there was something else that, you know, like that, just, just an update. What are we doing there? We still see outstanding items. Are we putting things in place? Yes, the well, suppression the system. Reports, I did read the reports, and often it's more of the same. We have, so, we, have a, we have a person who goes up there almost once a week, right? and then at the end of the month writes us a report and tells us what's going on there I understand and what's that. not going on. I also have requested to see the DEP reports. I haven't seen any of those, and they go up there twice a year, and I would like to compare what the DEP reports look like with these monthly reports to see if Actually, other I think recommendations the are going up this, uh, is coming in this week. Well, I, great. I believe. Then perfect timing. Then we can get a copy of that and just to see if they're making recommendations and whatever they're making are are we implementing. We one have the to, same. otherwise they shut us down. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's why they make the recommendations. That's right. And so that should be why we shouldn't have as many emails going back and forth if there are recommendations being made. That needs to be the in place. The emails that go back and forth have to do with odor. They do. It is they very do. difficult and to control that when it comes to weather, whether it's hot weather, cold weather, or wind. Right. It's very difficult to control that. And even the people who complain about it will tell you the minute they call somebody and we go up there and it's tested, it goes down because the wind may be blowing another way. Now, that doesn't solve the problem. Mm -hmm. That's why we went with the <coughs> odor test plan. I know I have pictures of And the there. mayor and I and so uh, um, Mr. DeFeo and a couple other people went up uh, and checked out an odor suppression system that they were using. I think it was in, um, I want to say uh, uh, Fairfield maybe. I can't remember what town it was in, but it was the same odor suppression system that they're now installed up here. No. So. Right. Hopefully, it's mm -hmm. been operational for the last couple of days, and hopefully, it's going to help. Uh, we'll see. I right. can't guarantee you it's going to help because even the ones that we, even the one that we saw, uh, actually it was in Florham Park. Even the one that we went to at the facility we went to, the guy says, depending upon how bad it is, it, you know, it, it's like 
it's almost like when you have a smell in your house and you, and you spray for breeze. Sometimes you spray it and it goes away. Other times you've got to spray it for 10 <laughs> minutes to get it to go away. You follow it up. No, you're laughing, but that's exactly, you know, that's exactly what it is. You see, it depends on how... Just, just one at a time. One at a time. Mr. Sears, you have the floor. It, it, it depends on how heavy it is and, right. what, and but what's that going that goes on. to my other questions that were asked about their site plan and making sure that they are within, are they exceeding the amount of materials that they're taking in to create, to make this situation worse. So that's what I want to see. I want to see a comparison on what's being reported. Are there but violations? that's what those monthly reports tell you, Susan. They mm -hmm. tell you whether they're in, in excess of what they should mm -hmm. have or not. Right, and many of the items are still outstanding. So the point is, what when are you say outstanding? Outstanding what do you mean by that, that? Uh, I don't know. I know there's water up there. I know that there's, or you know, are they using what they have up there to the best of their ability? That's the question. Okay, I'll I'll talk with Mr. DeFeo and see what I can do. Yeah, there's a there's a township site plan that's been on the plans for two or three years that hasn't gotten done. And I don't know whether that's what Councilwoman is referring They've to. They've done pieces of it, but it's not completed. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Councilwoman. So have they been paying fines when they're not in compliance for certain? Uh, if they get fined by DEP, they have to pay the fines. Can, can we know how much they paid in fines, or do we have that information? I can we haven't talk seen to Mr. DeFeo and find that mm -hmm. out. Because I, I think what happens sometimes, they get inundated, and they'll pay the fine because, you know, it's, it doesn't, I don't want to speak for them because I don't know what they're doing, but it just seems like they pay the fine because they're taking in so much additional volume of business that they're able to pay the fine and, you know, and it just may be easier for them that way. I don't the want to make accusations, but I, I'm curious to see how The only thing they actually make money on is mulch. Everything else they take in, they have to pay to get rid of it. So if you're bringing in leaves and you're not using them or, or, or burning them to make mulch and you're trying to and you're and you're you have to get rid of those things they have to pay to get rid of whatever right. comes into that facility bottles cans tires but there's markets out there that but, but there it used to be where you got paid for those mm -hmm. now it costs them money to get rid of that what they really make the money on more than anything is the mulch and that's what smells the worst because when you're when you're making it not only when you're making it but then it sits there this is the mulch season. Right, yeah. So that's why you're getting all these odor, it happens every year, you'll get these odor complaints from, you know, end of March through the end of June into July, and then they go away because most of the mulch is then taken by the people who are using it and it's gone. But that's what the odor complaints are about. And I can tell you that for 16 years I've been here, <laughs> Every year, it's the same time of the year that we get those complaints. I, I, I know, but mm. still, if you live across the street, which you know, my I don't mom did, with that. <laughs> you I'm don't not disagreeing. <laughs> That's why we went with this odor suppression system, yeah. and hopefully, it's going to help. I, I'm not, I'm not guaranteeing it's going to, because, like I said, when we spoke to the pre people where we saw, when we went to see it at that other facility, the guy said the same thing to me. He said, "Look," he says, "sometimes." It eliminates the odor completely. Other times, depending upon how heavy the odor is or how, how bad much the wind material is they blowing, brought in. Yeah. you know, mm -hmm. it, it's not. One, one, one thing I would like to request when you, I know time to time you get called, you go up there, just make sure you drive down Summit Road because as I discussed when I had family at the re, uh, mm -hmm. nursing home uh, there, you could smell it. And I it's, do that. Okay. I drive Summit Road, I drive the facility, and I drive the second across the street. <laughs> it's part of our lunch. Yeah, he's, he's, he'll tell you. He's been with me. Our, our, our lunch trip. Sounds like a good okay. diet, right? <laughs> he's just... been with me many times. And I okay. do it on the weekends. Even when I get the complaints on the weekends, I go down there. And, you know, it's, it's and, and believe me, I, you and I have had this conversation ten times already. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I do not, there's no way to eliminate that 100%. Unless you get rid of the facility, that's the only way. You can I, I will comp. I will compliment them because they uh, time on time have issues. You know when they get into data with the cardboard, and I see now that the person who works the site rides a bike from one because I guess it, it takes a while to walk from one point to the other. So he's now on bike to oh, yeah. ride over and throw the cardboard in and the machine to keep up with it. So I, I got to tell you, I was they, glad. To, I was glad to see that improvement. <laughs> they 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 do work with us. Yeah. They're not, you know, it's not like when we go in there they say, oh, we're not, you know, this is this, this. They work with us, but there mm -hmm. are some yeah. things, and I'm not. 
defending them, but there are, the odor complaint is the toughest complaint to eliminate. The toughest, I'm telling you right now. Everything else is, we can deal with. So you didn't mention that the fellow who, who patrols that area of the facility actually wears a mask uh, at times when I'm up there. He's oh, actually yeah, wearing a breathing ma apparatus, yes. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah. there's a lot of people that wear masks up there, yeah. believe it or not. So just I've to, seen them oh, before, too. Excuse me. Just to tie up loose ends, do you want... That's fine. Did you want to get some uh, recent DEP reports? Could we just no, get the last two years of DEP reports? Yeah, just just email them to us. I'm, ass I'm assuming Wayne, had, Wayne has copies of them. Okay. Well, the of we should have them. Why Wayne? We should have copies of Wayne is our representative. I know he is, but he's DEP. generating his own reports. We should have copies of reports from DEP. I have never right? seen an actual DEP report right. from Right, yet they come twice a year, so. Yeah, they may be in the clerk's office, but I have never seen them. Make it up. Dig them up. Do we want a presentation on the uh, odor eater technology? I don't think that's necessary. No. I'll share pictures. Just, just if you want to see the pictures, trust me. I will mm -hmm. share yeah. them with you. It's a machine with what is it? Just a big yes. Febreze machine? Here it is. Yeah. It's a yeah. machine yeah. with an odorizer. It has a huge two ten feet holes out. that spray. Oh, here's a ten foot pole. You can pass them over. Okay. Anything else, colleagues? Yes. Uh, sorry, Mr. Sarah. Councilwoman. So thank you, because I know you've been trying to call the, the state about the graffiti on 280. Oh, I have. And, um, <laughs> you know, they did a great job uh, from West Orange to Harrison, but they didn't make it up the hill to West Orange. So I was wondering we could give them another phone call. I think they're working their way up. They started, usually they start from the top and work their way down, but it seems this time they're working their way upwards. Are you talking okay. about 280? Yes. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Well, right, coming down 280, as soon as you hit that big sign on Pleasant Valley Way, the scribble has been yeah. there for yeah, about a that long sign, long you should see the walls. Oh, on no, the well, walls that well too. Park. And, that's and, and I, I can't like your poison ivy idea, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> And there I wish go. they could learn to match up their paint with the wall that they're no. painting. <laughs> that, yeah. unfortunately, I have no control over. It drives me crazy. That, unfortunately, I have no control over. I know, I know. Uh, uh, yes, please. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. You're for, you're for I was just going to say, as long as we're talking about graffiti, I just recently noticed that at the exit uh, heading west to east off of 280 at Mount Pleasant Road, there's graffiti up on the Welcome to West Orange sign. So we did notice if that. If somebody's the out one doing when you come off the highway, going yeah, eastbound or westbound? Going eastbound. I'll check that out. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll try to get thank you, Council President. Mr. Sarris, is there any way we can get the state DOT to try to help clean up the, you know, the exit ramp, especially at nine Funny. on Pleasant hey, Valley? They're out there all the time. I got to tell you something. They picked up the garbage. It's, it is disgusting oh. that people do what they do. Mm -hmm. They were out there probably two weeks ago. Did this exit ramp down at ten here and up? I came back two days later, and there were bags of garbage. I don't understand. Like people must just pull up there yeah. and just throw bags of garbage out on, on the side of the road. It's it's. I'm not kidding you. No, they I, did it, and two it, days later, was, when I got off the exit ramp, there were three bags of garbage right at the Mount Pleasant Avenue exit. It's terrible. And they're out there. I'm telling you, they're out there a lot. Yeah. But I don't know how, you know, how much how long they can be out there every day trying to get the garbage out of there. But it's, it's disgusting. People have to stop. Even up by it. my house, when I get on in Rolling, it's the same thing. There's garbage. People throw, it's almost like they, there's bags of recycling that people are throwing out of their cars on the side of the road. Yeah. It's terrible, mm -hmm. absolutely terrible. Okay. Thank you. But I, I do stay on top of that, trust me. Thank you, Mr. Sears. I try to anyway, I should say. Yes, thank you for calling. Anything else? That's all I got. Then I will certainly entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> the motion is carried. <laughs> no, I want, to, I want to stay all night. <laughs> so this ends our meeting tonight, uh, uh, West Orange. Our next meeting is May 9th. Wow. We'll see you then. Good night, everybody. I can't believe it.